Three years ago today, the zombie virus suddenly broke out, although the emergency center promptly issued an urgent notice. But ordinary citizens had no time to react. The zombie virus swept across the globe like a tidal wave. People desperately fled to survive. Creating a safe haven became the top priority for every government. The H country government set up a blockade around Fushan, the first power line. People gained temporary safety. Two problems followed, the first being the constant gathering of a large number of zombies, totaling about 30 million. Second, refugees have abandoned all dignity and fellow human beings in order to compete for resources. Under these circumstances, the government had to organize riot squads to suppress all violent incidents. But while people were desperately struggling to survive, some high-ranking officials and businessmen still lead extravagant lives. However, problems kept increasing. More and more refugees flooded into the safe haven, directly causing housing prices to be 100 times higher than before. Long-term rental prices increased 47 times, short-term rentals increased 30 times. This led to those without housing living in dire straits, just like those trapped outside the safe haven. The man's name is Jinzezu, 23 years old. Like most refugees, he lives in the temporary housing area of the safe haven. Whenever a housing advertisement appears before him, he would stare at it longingly for a long time. Jinzezu makes a living by selling his labor. Day after day, he secretly calculates, if he only sleeps two and a half hours a day, he would have an income of 4.5 million a month. But it would take 731 years to buy a house in the current safe haven. This is not the way he wants to make money at all. On this day, the government launched a campaign called Reclaiming Territory. For every zombie killed and its head brought back, one could receive a 5 million won reward. The screen is filled with the host's passionate voice. Aren't you hungry? Aren't you tired of being homeless? As long as you step out of the blockade line, you will have the chance to change your life. Listening to the host's provocative words, Jinzeza wanted to join this campaign. On this day, he mustered up the courage to participate in this campaign. People passed by him endlessly. It was clear that those people were all looking to change their fate. At this time, the ticket officer asked him to show his ticket. Jinzeza knew that showing the ticket meant giving up the comfortable life in the safe haven. But he'd rather die fighting than starve to death. This belief supported him. A ticket to Pushan represented a major change in his life. Jinzeza walked on platform 3. Behind him was an iron shovel stolen from his company. People were wandering on the platform waiting. After all, it is unknown whether the outcome of this campaign will be successful. Bet once, and the bicycle will turn into a motorcycle. Bet many times, and the motorcycle may turn into a spinning top. Whether they would become part of the zombie horde, homeowners, or something else, would all be revealed today. At this moment, a girl came running from behind. But Jinzeza's body, trained by manual labor, knocked the girl flying in an instant. Followed by a clattering sound, it was crossbow bolts. The girl felt pain and couldn't get up for a while. Meanwhile, a man bent down to pick up the crossbow bolts on the ground. The girl was startled and hurriedly shouted, give it back to me quickly. But her thin body not only did not receive the man's apology, but also attracted another man to her. He snatched the crossbow from the girl's backpack with one hand, roughly grabbing her hair. He wanted the girl to know, someone who can't even protect the weapon in their hand. Even if they participate in the battle, they can only become food for zombies. Hand over the crossbow and go home. The next second, a large hand grabbed the man's wrist. It was Jinzezu. He slammed the man's head against the wall without a word. The man's journey to reclaim territory ended here. But Jinzezu had no intention of returning the crossbow to the girl. The girl felt like she had just escaped from the tiger's mouth only to enter the wolf's den. Just then, a soldier shouted angrily in their direction. He was immediately stopped by the captain. Don't waste energy on them. They are so excited because they have no idea about the true purpose of this operation, population reduction. The train slowly departed and didn't arrive at its destination, Pushan Station, until evening. When the doors opened, what greeted their eyes was an empty platform. Not a single zombie could be seen. And only civilians got off the train not a single soldier. Just as people were confused, a loud and clear loudspeaker sounded above their heads. Participants of the 17th Reclaimed Territory campaign, thank you for coming here. As we all know, Fushan is densely populated. We need to reduce the population to ensure per capita land safety. Therefore, Fushan and the government will remember your sacrifice. The last sentence was especially earth-shattering. People awoke from their days. What greeted their eyes was a horde of zombies coming one after another. People's anger was of no use. The train detached from the rear cars and quickly left. It was then that people realized they had been abandoned. They desperately ran after the train, trying to grasp this last lifeline. But how could human strength compare to a train? When their strength was exhausted, people began to fall. He shouted why at the top of his lungs, but a zombie had already appeared behind him. On the other side, people escaped into the train car, but the door was blocked by the people who wanted to get in and could not be closed. Under these circumstances, zombies also burst into the cars. Screams and wails rose and fell. Jinzezu also handed the crossbow to the girl, but said he was lending it to her, the rent being 10 zombies. The zombies outside can all be exchanged for money. Jinzezu didn't want to miss the opportunity to make money. The girl beside him widened her 
eyes. Jinzezu had already pulled out his iron shovel. With a squeak, all the zombies looked at him. The next second, the zombie horde rushed towards him like ants devouring an elephant. Three years ago, the zombie virus suddenly broke out. But a group of special humans awakened in the world. They possessed unusual powers. And the man belonged to this type of person. He thought he would be welcomed like a hero after single-handedly killing 8,000 zombies. But he didn't expect that what awaited him was betrayal by the government and humans. Jinzeza's physical fitness, which he had trained by selling his labor, was fully utilized in the chaotic battle. He only needed one blow to send a zombie's head flying, and another sweep of the shovel to decapitate a zombie. But the number of zombies was just too many. In a moment of carelessness, he was slammed against the wall by a zombie he had already killed. Jinzezu immediately spat out a mouthful of blood. The girl watched him worriedly from the top of the train car. Jinzezu, who was leaning against the wall, had white pupils, as if he had lost consciousness. The next second, his eyes emitted a terrifying light. Facing the zombie horde again, he let out a roar like a wild beast. The iron shovel, carrying a fierce wind, harvested one zombie after another. At this moment, he was like an azura from hell. The battle continued until morning, with sunlight shining on the severed limbs on the platform. The girl looked at all this in disbelief. She looked at the man sitting on a pile of corpses. He, he was actually counting the number of zombies he had killed. In the third group of the land, infrastructure, and natural resources department, the specialist was watching this unbelievable scene. How is this possible? He killed 8,000 zombies. Outside the fourth district of Fushan's border, surrounded by defensive structures covered in zombies, suddenly a soldiers shouted that there were zombies at 12 o'clock, everyone was startled. But when they saw there were only two zombies, the captain got angry and slapped the shouting soldier on the forehead. When have you ever seen zombies roaming alone? The binoculars showed a man and a woman. They were carrying bags, with large patches of blood on their bodies. At the girl's constant gesturing, the soldier decided to ask for instructions from superiors. In the reception room of the Ministry of Land and Transportation, the third team Captain Jin Mingzi was sitting opposite Jin Zezu with two bodyguards. The data shows a total of 8,021 zombies he's killed. 5 million one each. A large box of money was presented in front of Jinzezu. This was the first time in Jinzezu's life that he had seen so much money. Before receiving the payment, Jin Mingzi asked Jinzezu to agree to two conditions. First, to keep this reclaiming territory campaign confidential. Second, to leave behind anything on his body contaminated with the virus. These demands weren't excessive, so Jinzezu immediately pressed his handprint on the agreement. But after he left, Jin Mingzi revealed a cunning expression. After leaving the building, Jin Zezu took out 30 million from the box and gave it to the girl. We're even, no debts between us. Then he left directly because he was in a hurry to buy a house, a place where his parents could find him. After paying 39.5 billion, he got the house he wanted. It was a detached house with a garage. The moment he entered, a sense of security washed over him. He took off his shoes, eager to check out his future home. Just then, he felt a sharp pain in the sole of his foot. What's this? Black blood flowed from his punctured skin. Recalling that Jin Mingzi had asked him to leave behind items contaminated with the the virus. Could it be that he did something? At this moment, all the blood vessels on Jinzeza's body were swollen and black. His eyes were red and bloodshot. Scenes from his past flashed through his mind. After the zombie virus outbreak, he and his brother got separated from their parents. But his brother believed their parents weren't dead. When they buy a house, they can hang their names in front of the house so their parents can find them. This was the reason Jinzeza desperately earned money to buy a house. But a bad person had dragged him into the abyss. The moment after Jinzeza stepped on the nail, Jin Mingzi appeared at his door with the riot squad. He used a megaphone to say, Survivor of the 17th reclaimed territory campaign, Mr. Jinzezu, you have been infected. According to Article 1, Section 3 of the Zombie Prevention Law, we will take away the infected Jinzezu. According to Article 3, Section 7, we will have to confiscate all property of the infected. At this moment, Jinzezu pushed open the door. His mind was in a haze. Images of zombies, poverty, played in his mind like a video. He is not reconciled, he just wants to have a house of his own. Why? Why doesn't the world allow the poor to have their dreams come true? This is a house for waiting for the family to come back. The girl was so weak she couldn't even hold her own weapon steady. No one expected that she was actually Kuiyejiang, the CEO of the largest mercenary company, in a particularly tall luxury house. Kuiyejiang was washing off the dirt on her body, because at 5.30, she would meet the company's new client. At this time, the client Zhang Minghao was nervously sitting in the living room waiting for the CEO of Slasher, a company even the government didn't dare to offend. Due to the sudden outbreak of the zombie virus three years ago, and the government's inability to protect people's property, many goods or important items were left in dangerous areas. Naturally, many companies like Slasher emerged, and it was one of the largest mercenary companies. Of course, the prices of big companies were naturally not low. The company would quote based on the size and location of the items. This time Zhang Minghao needed to bring back a 200 kg safe from a big city. When he saw the quote, he was troubled, it was too expensive. Even the cheapest service item cost 5.1 billion. With only 1 billion in cash, he was immediately given a contemptuous look by Kuiyejiang, talking to a poor guy like he was simply a waste of time. It's a seller's market now. 
please leave. Hearing this, Zheng Ninghao panicked and said. He also had digital currency equivalent to 50 billion. In this era of rampant zombies, all currencies successively collapsed, but digital currency increased thousands of times. Zheng Ninghao would sell these currencies to pay slasher's fees. Jian's attitude immediately did a 180 degree turn. After seeing Zheng Ninghao off, Jian prepared to go out. She was going to give someone a housewarming gift. At this time, Jin Zezo angrily rushed towards the riot squad. All the negative emotions of resentment and grievance surged up in his heart, making this upright and strong man shed tears. When a person is pushed into a corner, you don't know what he will do. The next second, Jin Zezu pounced on a squad member. Although the squad member kept swinging his baton at him, Jin Zezu felt no pain at all. He had already been infected with the zombie virus. His eyes focused, and he bit the squad member's neck. The squad members were all stunned by the scene. A few quick reacting ones immediately rushed forward to stop Jin Zezu. At this time, the bitten squad member was almost suffocating. Several people forcibly pulled Jin Zezu away, tearing out the flesh and blood of the team member. Get away, you madman. Jin Mingzi also realized Jin Zezu's intention to infect others. He wants us to die together. In three minutes, he will completely turn into a zombie, kill him. But not a single squad member dared to attack him. Jin Mingzi also became anxious. You have dozens of people. Whoever kills him, I'll give an extra reward. Just as a brave man was about to step forward, Jin Zezu stood up like a zombie. His words were already somewhat slurred. My house, no one can take it away. What makes a person about to turn into a zombie so obsessed with his house? It's the belief in finding his family. They awakened a monster that had killed 8,000 zombies. At this time, the members of the riot squad were either dead or turned into zombies. It could be said they met a complete defeat. Jin Mingzi's legs went weak with fear. Before him was the wailing of his deputy, around him was a courtyard splattered with blood. He didn't understand, it was just dealing with one person. Why did it turn out like this? Just then, a sound came from behind him. He didn't know the person coming. This person slowly opened a box, revealing a sharp chainsaw inside. This person was Xia Shangxiu, a B-class slasher belonging to the slasher company, who had killed 77,890 zombies. Kuei Jiang also came this time. After learning their identities, Jin Mingzi immediately begged the two for help. But these two people knew about his dirty deeds. Kuei Jiang said, now even zombies can talk. Xia Shangxiu smiled knowingly, received. The next second, he started the chainsaw. Jin Mingzi didn't have time to react before he was decapitated. The commotion here attracted the zombies' attention. But Xia Shangxiu's combat power was truly strong. He swung his chainsaw, and in no time, all the zombies were killed. The two came to Jin Zezu's front. Why have others all turned into zombies? While this person, infected first, still hasn't mutated, is it willpower? If we turn him into a slasher, it would surely bring a good return. Then Kuei Jiang said, Sir, do you want to live? Jin Zezu didn't understand why she asked this. He was about to die soon. Did he have any other quice? Kuei Jiang said they were slashers. They were selected from survivors who performed well in the reclaimed territory operations, specifically used to handle the needs of companies, warlords, and politicians. Slasher's income was very high. Jin Zezu was confused. I just said, I'm about to die. At this moment, Kuei Jiang took out a dose of medicine from her pocket. This medicine could keep Jin Zezu alive. But the medicine was worth 500 billion. He could only choose to become a slasher to repay it. This was a hellish world. Jin Zezu fell silent. This meant he would become a sword in someone else's hand. At this moment, he vomited blood profusely, seeming about to completely mutate. Xia Shanxi impatiently snatched the medicine. He really couldn't stand it anymore. Although becoming a slasher was entirely voluntary. But who in the world would choose death? After the medicine was injected into Jin Zezu's body, he passed out. This also meant he was embarking on a different life from now on. The man just slept and ended up owing a 500 billion huge debt. He was even sent to the danger zone to kill zombies. All this was because he was hired as a slasher. Jin Zezu woke up startled from his dream. He found himself in a taxi. The driver was a middle-aged bald man. The man asked Jin Zezo how much he remembered. He vaguely remembered going to Pushyong, then zombies, buying a house. Then, wasn't he infected? Why was he still alive and well now? The man then said, All the answers you want are in the video on that tablet. He had to focus on driving so he couldn't explain in detail to Jin Zezu. Outside the car, a zombie saw the car and let out a roar. The man suddenly turned the steering wheel, the car drifted like an AE-86, avoiding all the zombies along the way. But this caused Jin Zezu in the back seat to suffer. He struggled to reach out and tap the tablet. Hello sir, I'm Kuiazin, your slasher trainer for today. This cosplayer made Jin Zezu stare. What is she doing? Kuiazin explained what a slasher is. This term refers to a service specifically for dealing with zombies. The main services include acquiring territory, collecting items, rescuing survivors, handling specific targets, and so on. Then why aren't these things handled by the government and soldiers? Because of resource shortages. The sudden outbreak of the zombie virus caused the government to lose a large amount of supplies. Although ammunition factories are still operating, the steel for making bullets and raw materials for gunpowder have long been exhausted. Now their resources are only enough to protect the blockade zone. 
This is the original intention of the government creating the Reclaim Territory campaign. People who performed well in the operation would be hired as slasher. Now Mr. Jinzezu is also in this industry. Jinzezu offscreen kept cursing in his heart. How did he become what they call a slasher? Kuyazin seemed to have anticipated his reaction. Mr. Jinzezu doesn't want to do this? But why you have no quice? Because Mr. Jinzezu owes us a huge debt. Jinzezu was completely baffled. Could this be a pyramid scheme organization? The next second, a huge boom sounded from the screen. Mr. Jinzezu, don't you remember? You used a dose of medicine while fighting zombies. The medicine was developed by a secret pharmaceutical company, put into use after being proven effective. And its market price is 500 billion won. Even if you get the current best 23% bank loan, you're still 115 billion short. Until you pay off the principal and interest, Mr. Jinzezu will be my slave. To survive, please be a good slave and repay the debt, Mr. Jinzezu. The video ended here. This woman's harsh words were so gentle. The middle-aged man also revealed his identity. His surname was Chui, belonging to the slasher company. He was a D-class slasher, having killed 1,712 zombies. Jinzezu didn't believe any of this. He wanted to get out of the car and leave this absurd place. Old Chui didn't stop him. In his view, Jinzezu would have to get out sooner or later, because the car had already entered the danger zone. This was also Jinzezu's first task. Pass through this road into Qingzhou City, retrieve the hard drive from the designated location, and contact Old Chui after retrieval. Old Chui reminded Jinzezu not to think too much. If you want to return to Fushan, just do what you do best. That is, what you did in Pushyang. After getting out of the car, Jinzezu saw a large group of zombies in front of him. It was really an inauspicious start. He hated zombies, but had to leave the safe zone. Now he is doing zombie-related work to pay off debts. All of this seems so ridiculous. The world always forces the weak to make choices, but these choices are made without options. At this time, Old Shui was reporting to Kui Yejiang. He felt Jinzeza seemed very angry, but he would complete the first task. After hanging up the phone, the assistant asked her, Will this rookie act according to our expectations? Don't worry, he'll do fine, because he's a born hunting dog. Besides, he has no choices. The amount of money he owes us is too huge to be repaid by working as a waiter in a bar. The man just wanted to complete the task quickly. Then go back and play cosplay with the woman who gave him the injection. But a troublemaker appeared halfway, trying to hinder his progress. Jinzeza faced a large group of zombies without fear. He knew fear had no meaning. Fear would only slow down his actions. In a state of being surrounded by zombies, a small mistake would be his doom. Because of this, each of his movements was executed cleanly and efficiently. The zombie horde also gradually decreased under his frenzied attacks. After who knows how long, he was already sweating profusely. But this heroic performance was recorded by the drone above his head. Kuyajian also saw the live footage. She just felt that the medicine injected into him at that time was really worth it. Jinzezu had such a performance right out of the gate. Old Chui also deeply agreed. There had never been a newcomer like Jinzezu. This was good material for making slasher promotional videos. It also contributes to the company's creation of a mercenary codename Somanpro. While they were discussing Jinzezu, Jinzezu expressed great frustration. How did he suddenly become deeply in debt? That's 500 billion, a number that could only exist in hell. From now on, he might have to live like a slave. He wanted to find that crazy woman who helped him inject the medicine. If he couldn't break free from control, he'd rather die with her. But the problem is, he's in the danger zone now. That woman isn't here at all. How can he get back to Fushan? Maybe if he pretends to obey and completes the task, he can go back. Crazy woman, just you wait. After overcoming many obstacles, Jinzeza finally arrived at his destination, 406, Xingbei Road No. 1, Xingzhou City. The hard drive is on the 11th floor of this building. The drone can't continue filming inside the building. Old Shui's work also stopped. He just felt that this Jinzezu was a real genius at being a slasher. His intelligence, willpower, endurance, and strength were all top-notch. This could only mean that the boss had a keen eye, every person she picked was a monster. And as a liaison for such people, he could easily earn big money, allowing his family to live a worry-free life. Just then, a black lump hit the windshield. Old Shui's gaze sharpened, his hand already reaching for his waist. A sharp axe appeared in his hand. He found that this thing was a piece of meat. The cut was very smooth and clean. It didn't seem like something a zombie would do, more like it was done by a human. Thinking of this, Old Chui immediately looked around. He saw a shadow escaping from the rooftop. Who is it? Old Chui only dared to ask in a voice only he could hear. The next second, the phone hidden in the meat emitted a piercing alarm sound. Old Chui was startled. But before he could get over the shock, the zombies had already pounced on him. The scene shifts. Jinzezu was standing in the computer room looking confused. He's a complete computer illiterate. He doesn't even know what a hard drive looks like. 30 minutes later, he appears in the corridor with a bunch of bags. He could only pack up everything that looked like a hard drive and cursing his creditor in his mouth. But no matter what, from his perspective, he had completed the task. But he couldn't contact Old Chui no matter what. At this time, 
a figure appeared near Old Chui's car. He determined the location of this slasher. The mysterious person's eyes flashed coldly. He put away the meat from earlier, seeming to want to use the same trick again. The mysterious person's name is Pia Shangjun, a former C-class slasher of the slasher company, who had killed 2037 zombies, codenamed Ghost. This person is extremely dangerous. Zombies are no longer his sole target. The reason he became like this was that evil thing money. In a joint operation, Pia Shangjun experienced the greatest insult of his life. The joint commands discount to the client, plus the slasher company's 30% commission, plus personal income tax. He only got a mere 5 billion, and the explanation he got was that for someone as useless as him in the operation, 5 billion was already the highest salary he could get. Don't keep living off past achievements, if you want more, improve your level. The result was Pia Shangjun leaving Slasher and becoming a hunter. All targets related to money were his prey. At this time, he just wanted to sabotage Slasher Company's mission, then sell the commission items, killing two birds with one stone. The meat was thrown directly onto Jinzezu's face. The next second, the phone made a sound as before. A large horde of zombies also arrived as expected. The man just complained that there were no tourists in the amusement park. So the amusement park turned on the speakers to attract nearby tourists. Pia Shangjun knew he had no advantage in a direct confrontation. But zombies are very sensitive to sound and smell. In other words, if you hide yourself and lure the zombies to your opponent's location, you don't have to face a strong enemy directly and can achieve the effect of using others to kill. The naive Jinzezu still doesn't know why the meat makes a sound. Is it from Martian civilization? The zombies have already reached him, he can only fight. Pia Shangjun looked at Jinzezu being submerged by the zombie horde with a contemptuous look. He believed that facing thousands of zombies alone, even a first-class slasher would die here. Wait a bit longer, and he'd lure away the zombie horde. Then see what this person's mission item is. The next second, a loud boom startled him. He looked back. That person had actually blasted away the pile of zombies. Now he realized that the person before him was not a third-rate slasher like himself, but a complete madman. Is he the monster standing on top of the pyramid? He and the previous taxi driver were not on the same level at all. Pia Shangjun told himself to stay calm. As long as he continues to attract zombies, he will eventually tire out. And Shinjo now has no shortage of zombies. But just as he was about to throw out the bait again, he didn't expect Jinzezu to look over here. The two just stood there staring at each other, the scene was very awkward. Jinzezu realized where the meat came from. Pia Shangjun also knew things were not good. He threw the meat in his hand with all his strength, and it hit Jinzezu's face again. At this time, Jin Jizhu locked his target on him. The two began a chase. Pia Shangjun kept throwing out bait. Jinzezu kept clearing the zombies attracted by the meat. As this process kept repeating, Jinzezu became increasingly angry, while Pia Shangjun's bait was exhausted. At this time, he realized that the one chasing him was simply a monster. Soon, the two chased into an amusement park. Pia Shangjun cursed, stop chasing, you madman. But he seemed to have forgotten that he was the one who started this fight. Jinzezu asked him, did you kill the taxi driver? Pia Shangjun's silence represented admission. Then you can only pay with your life. At this moment, Pia Shangjun secretly reached into his waist bag. Is he going to draw a gun? Jinzezu immediately became alert. He threw the engineer's shovel and hit Park Sangjun's left shoulder. This made Pia Shangjun even more frantic. What he took out wasn't a gun, but a controller. A controller for the amusement park sound system. He wanted to die together with Jinzezu. Then the amusement park played the sound of death. Welcome, visitors to the amusement park. Please leave wonderful memories today. This last sentence really had a sense of irony. A single phone could attract dozens of zombies. What about speakers with higher sound transmission rate? Qingzhou has a permanent population of 260,000. You die here with me. Just then, a footstep sound caught both their attention. The newcomer was an old man, who asked casually, whose is that engineer shovel? Jinzezu was also very confused. At this time, the outside should be full of zombies. How did this old man get in? The sound of the speakers drowned out the old man's voice. The old man got angry. The next second, a fishing rod carrying the tail flame of the fishing line cut all the surrounding speakers in half. Seeing this, the two immediately changed color. So strong. The old man was actually Jin's Hizen, an A-class slasher belonging to the slasher company, who had killed 112,700 zombies. This time the old man asked in a tone that left no room for doubt. Who owes Kui Ajiang money? Jinzezu innocently raised his hand, I think you're talking about me. They thought the old man was just taking his grandson to the amusement park, but he wielded a fishing rod with extraordinary skill. He even insisted on being the protagonist's teacher. At Slasher Company, Kuiyejiang asked Jinzezu to rescue Jinzezu, because Old Chui hadn't replied to headquarters for a long time. He might have encountered a slasher hunter and met with misfortune, although Kuiyejiang didn't want to admit it. This was the best explanation. The helicopter will arrive in half an hour. The reward for this mission is 50 billion. Then Jinzezu 
pushed the box back to her. This was clearly dissatisfaction with the reward. Kriyejiang immediately said the situation there was very urgent. And although the treatment drug was already discounted, it still cost 300 billion. The answer she got was, your requirement is for me to bring the medicine and go rescue people. I have to protect both the medicine and the personnel, and even guide him. The reward I want is 200 billion. If it's okay, fine. If not, forget it. I'm very busy. At this time, in the amusement park, Jin Sizen shouted loudly. Who's the little bastard that owes Kuyejiang money? Jin Zezu innocently raised his hand. I think you're talking about me. Jin Sizen, this old hand, also began to analyze the person in front of him. The little bastard's physical qualities are not bad. Bringing him back shouldn't be too difficult. His eyes are very sharp indicating he's always on alert, good, rough palms, indicating he lived a hard life before, conclusion, although he is still weak at this stage, he has the qualities to become a strong person, this old man should be sent by the creditor, Jinzezu immediately asked, old man, who are you, you can call me teacher, what the hell, you're deciding my life, at this moment, the gate could no longer withstand the impact of the zombie horde, with a bang, the zombies poured in like wild horses, Jinzezu, seeing this, didn't want to waste words anymore, solving the problem at hand was key, unexpectedly, a rod tip hit him on the head, Jin Sizen wanted him to know what respecting teachers and valuing the way meant, but now Jin Zezu was more concerned about how to leave here safely, Jin Sizen looked at him helplessly, are you asking me how to leave safely, then let me give you your first lesson, killing zombies and fishing, what do you think they have in common, Jin Zezu was completely baffled, Jin Sizen took out a special rod tip, the next second, the rod tip seemed to come alive, jumping freely in the air, what I mean is you need to resonate with your weapon, then the old man cast the fishing rod forward, Forward. The fishing line swept towards the zombies like a wave. The zombies were immediately cut into pieces. Then the fishing line seemed to be equipped with satellite positioning. Each strike would take the lives of several or even more than a dozen zombies. Jinzezu exclaimed, Old man, watch out behind you. The thin fishing line had already circled around Jinzhizen once. He continued speaking casually. All of this requires patience. You need to know one rule which is how to use it. The next second, Jin Sizen shouted, Get down, kid! Jin Zezu didn't dare to think, immediately lying on the ground. The rod tip turned into a blur, forming a ring around Jin Sizen. All the zombies had a neat cut appear on their bodies. What just happened? The zombies in front of Jin Zezu all split into two halves. Even the house behind them didn't escape. This power is too terrifying, is this the strength of an A-class slasher? The fishing line is about 30 meters long. Within this 30 meter radius, all zombies were killed in one strike. Is this really something humans can do? Just as he was thinking, a zombie stood up behind Jin Zezu, it was Pia Shangjun. The zombie blood on the engineer's shovel turned him into a zombie. But he was different from other zombies. He was a mutant, formed by a certain probability of zombie mutation. Part of his organs mutated, becoming a C-class mutant. Although Pia Shangjun turned into a zombie, he still retained some deep memories. He remembered the phrase, stop living off your past achievements, if you want more, level up. He was angry, he felt wronged, damn C-class. With just one punch, he sent Jin Sizen flying into the wall, making a headache-inducing sound. He despised rookies like Jin Zezu, but he despised top slashers like Jin Sizen even more. He wanted to kill everyone here before losing consciousness. Jin Zezu didn't dare to be careless, he already had a steel bar in his hand. Pia Shangjun swung his sandbag-sized fist towards Jin Zezu. Such fast speed. A C-class mutant is not something he can handle now. Pia Shangjun's right hand was cut into two. At this moment, Jin Sizen's voice came from afar. I remember we've met before, Ghost, a coward who always wore protective suits. You didn't want to face zombies. While others are killing zombies, you are doing sneaky things. So you don't qualify to be a slasher. Now that you've become a zombie, you've completely disgraced the slashers. Old man, shut up. Pia Shangjun used his remaining fist to strike at Jin Sizen. At this moment, Jin Sizen wanted to test Jin Zezu. What did I just say? The beautiful story about zombies and fishing. Then you need to remember one thing. Even if others are afraid that you're a monster, it doesn't matter. But if you kill for money, you'll become a real monster. Let's go. Kuyejiang is waiting for you. If you like it, please give a thumbs up. The editor will continue to update. The old man is a billionaire. But no one expected that the house he's living in now is a communal apartment. No servants, no rich meals. If he comes home late, he has to walk on the stone path in the dark. At night, Jin Zezu finally couldn't help but ask Old Jean, do you become a slasher for the money? Old Jean answered without hesitation, yes, but where did all your money go? Old Jean didn't want to hide anything from this disciple. He came to a cabinet, carefully taking out the key hanging on his chest. The moment he opened the cabinet door, what came into view were photos, 
one after another. This is the reason he's desperately making money, guilt. Next to the photos was the potion worth 500 billion. The potion's purpose is to cure the zombie virus. But now it seems more like it's used to cure old Jean himself. When the zombie virus first broke out, old Jean was fishing alone near his home. This causing him to be unable to return home in time when the virus outbreak occurred. The farthest distance is when family is right beside you, but you can't go to rescue them. Just like that, he went from having a happy family to being all alone now. He wants to go back to shore and turn all his family members from zombies back into humans. However, this idea might just be in vain. Finding family members among millions of zombies in Shore is like looking for a needle in a haystack. But it's this stubborn and money-loving old man who is deeply respected by soldiers and bodyguards. Is this really just because of his strength? Jin Sizen smiled happily. This might be a kind of emotional bond between two lonely people in the end times. Because whether you live in a dangerous zone or a refugee camp, it can't prevent loss. Only those who accept these facts become strong and respected. Jin Sizen asked Jin Zezu, what have you lost? Of course he had lost things. His parents. His childhood. His friends. His brother. The longer he meditates which means the more things Jin Zezu loses. He recalled that sentence. Once we buy a house and put our names in front of it, our parents will be able to find us. For this dream, his brother left the safe zone, and since then there has been no news. The two had similarities. One chose to have family first, then a home. The other chose to have a home first, then family. They had another thing in common. Hope. Regarding how to handle the house Jin Zezu bought, Kuei Jiang also gave her answer. The company will use the house as collateral. Jin Zezu certainly couldn't accept this outcome. Seeing Jin Zezu get angry, Kuei Jiang also got mad. First is the cost of the potion. Then she paid out of her own pocket to rescue him, and the taxi driver's funeral expenses. Finally, the cost of using the helicopter. These costs added up to at least 800 billion. So much money only to be met with Jin Zezu's angry curses. In this mission's battle, Jin Zezu losing the hard drive was equivalent to mission failure. She hadn't even exploded yet, but Jin Zezu got angry first. Jin Zezu didn't hold back either. After all, he felt the potion wasn't something he asked for. Shinjo wasn't where he wanted to go either. He demanded Kuei hand over the house keys. The atmosphere on site became tense. Kuei said, I won't give you the keys, try and touch me if you dare. Jin Zezu, blinded by anger, really wanted to make a move. A shout of stop, halted him. Old Jin's hand was already reaching for his fishing rod. This was because he knew Kuei wasn't cheating Jin Zezu. Jin Zezu felt wronged. Whether he turned into a zombie or not was his own business. It was this crazy woman in front of him who took everything away from him. Old Jin said, then why don't you kill more zombies to pay off the debt? Retrieving items and reclaiming territory can all earn commission. These can all help you clear your debt. He said he would help and guide Jin Zezu. Jin Zezu snorted and turned his head away. He said the day he clears his debt is the day he quits being a slasher. That day he will definitely give Kuei Jiang a good beating. Kuei Jiang scoffed, now you will only make the company lose more and more money. At the same time, she handed over the prearranged potion to old Jean, although she lost quite a bit on this investment. But she's still a person of credit. Before she could finish speaking, old Jean snatched the potion and said cheekily, Dear boss, thank you. Kuei Jiang felt very pained about this money. Then she asked old Jean if he really wanted to train this bastard. Although he can't control his emotions now, as long as he abandons that naive worldview, he could at least reach Shangxiu's level. With that, old Jean was about to leave. Before he left, Kuei Jiang asked old Jean to bring this bastard to tomorrow night's slasher party and teach him professional slasher knowledge and the current world situation. A high-end sedan, driven by a handsome man. An ordinary scooter, driven by a beautiful woman. Which one would you choose to ride? At this moment, Jin Zezu, sitting by the sea, looked back. This is old Jean? Isn't it just a party? Isn't your outfit a bit too exaggerated? Although such slasher parties are very common nowadays, wearing formal attire shows respect. Jin Zezu said his clothes were comfortable, and he would be fine as long as he could catch zombies. Obviously, he still hadn't accepted his identity as a slasher. Soon, a high-end sedan drove up from the distance. This was the company car specifically sent to pick up old Jean. The driver was also his exclusive A-class liaison, Zeo Zangi. Since it was exclusive, naturally Jin Zezu cannot be allowed to get in the car. The company would send his own exclusive liaison over. This is the hierarchy belonging to slasher. Just as Jin Zezu was confused, a scooter pulled up in front of him. The girl was Jin Zezu's new exclusive A-class liaison, Minali. When performing tasks, slashers and liaisons complement each other. Every slasher is a valuable resource for humanity. Slashers are responsible for the most dangerous frontline missions, while liaisons help them handle all miscellaneous matters. In other words, they can be called butlers. This is the job of a liaison. Inside a luxurious villa, Kuei Jian was preparing to dress up for the occasion. The assistant asked in confusion, Miss, do you have any expectations for Jin Zezu? Why choose her as the liaison? Kuei Jian believed in Manali's abilities, and it was also a test for her. Kuei Jian, who was once an A-class liaison, has now become the company's representative. What she has to manage is not just a C-class slasher, 
but a top company with 44 slashers. Just as old Jean said, as long as that bastard abandons his naive worldview, he could at least reach Shangxiu's level. The reason she believed Minali would be his catalyst was because her personality was very similar to Kui Jiang's. This was her plan. Minali's task this time was to be responsible for Jin Zezo's transportation. She also sensed a strong aura from him. While Jin Zezo remembered what old Jean had told him about these parties before coming. These parties are jointly held by slasher companies and elites from various circles. Slasher ranks are divided into four levels from low to high, classified by the number of zombies killed. D-class requires 100 kills, A-class requires 100,000 kills, and the lowest ranked slasher attending this party is B-class. You, dude, are an exception. At this time, the Baiji Five Star Hotel was bustling with people. Everyone was busy with their own tasks. Just then, a bodyguard said, they're here, all departments pay attention. Then came a variety of vehicles. Bodyguards also lined up to welcome the arrival of important figures. Only A-class slashers could receive such high treatment. Affiliated with Lost in Victory, codename Big Brother, Sangdez, freelancer, codename Dog Seller, Pia Chunzi, affiliated with Jehovah's Holiness Church, codename Priest, Bibexian, affiliated with Suezhan Law Firm, codename Female Boss, Lizwaron, affiliated with the Ministry of Defense Special Forces, codename Lieutenant, Renziguang, affiliated with Jejar Enterprises, codename Fish Market, Hanhua Elder, of course, how could we forget our old Jean, affiliated with Suezhan Law Firm, codename Fisherman, Jin's has an elder, as the hotel doors opened, it also signaled the official start of this party. What was thought to be an ordinary party turned into people auctioning off zombies at the venue. Is this the distortion of humanity or the degradation of morality? Outside the Baiji Five Star Hotel, bodyguards were verifying the list of attendees. The Slasher Conference is the largest and most important conference in the country today, and no mistakes can be made. At this moment, the sound of brakes caught the bodyguard's attention. The bodyguard warmly greeted Min Ali but ignored Jin Zezu beside her. Obviously, she had come to this kind of occasion more than once. Min Ali introduced Jin Zezu to the bodyguard. However, the bodyguard found that his name wasn't on the invitation list. After learning he was only a C-class slasher, the bodyguard showed a disdainful expression. The party rules state that only B-class or above can enter, or be accompanied by a VIP. Just then, Kuei Jiang appeared. She stated that Jin Zezu was invited by her. The bodyguard quickly explained he was just following procedures. Kuei Jiang didn't mind the bodyguard's attitude. She just calmly said, Don't underestimate this survivor of the 17th Territory Reclamation Campaign. He's the tough guy who rose from rookie to C-class in just one night. He's also the toy I'm most interested in right now. This news has already spread among the slashers. All the big shots are waiting for this super rookie. I don't think you'll go against the trend will you? Inside the exhibition hall, Kuei Jiang proudly stated, in the future, if anyone tries to stop him, he can mention her name. But Jin Zezu felt that if Kuei Jiang hadn't appeared, he could have gone home early to sleep. Kuei Jiang teased, my little dog is so disobedient, but please do as I say before you pay back the 800 billion. Jin Zezu was very angry at this, but his eyes swept across the venue. There were delicacies everywhere. For someone from a temporary residence area like him, Seeing all this was simply unbelievable. That's because the slashers in this banquet hall have killed at least 30,000 zombies. Or they are liaisons who serve them. Party information everywhere. There are also big sponsors who issue missions. Everyone's purpose for coming here is the same, to make deals. One mission might involve amounts as high as hundreds or even thousands of billions. After the virus outbreak, Various aspects of the national economy were in decline. This is the only continuously growing business. Jin Zezu didn't understand why Minali was saying these things. Just because as a liaison, she wants to let her slasher integrate into the party as soon as possible and be proud to attend the party. If you see something you dislike, you must remain calm. Because Jin Zezu came from a refugee background, many refugees struggle daily for food. There might be people or things here that make him uncomfortable. As they were talking, someone came to chat. He quite admired Jin Zezu's performance of killing 8,000 zombies in one day. Min Ali whispered an introduction. This person is the CEO of VF Group, who has issued 24 missions. Each mission's reward is no less than 50 billion. He's a VIP among VIPs. The purpose of his attendance at the banquet is to retrieve his wife's finger. His wife is currently in the air raid shelter in Dekio. He only needs to retrieve her thumb because her fingerprint is needed to decode stock trading. Hearing this, Jin Zezu's face darkened, and he turned to leave. He couldn't accept such a cold gaze, nor could he fake insincere flattery. Because he was too angry, he bumped into a burly man's shoulder as he turned. He received an angry scolding from the burly man. Are you that rumored rookie? Don't you watch where you're going? Just as the two were about to fight, they were stopped by another person. The man's name was Machangui, affiliated with Lost in Victory, B-class slasher, codename Viper. He told Jin Zezu, everyone here treats newcomers like this. This means they're really interested in you, don't get too angry. The main event is about to start, they don't have time to bother with you. At this moment, all the lights in the venue went out, leaving only a spotlight illuminating the host. The main event was about to begin. 
But unlike the reactions of the businessmen and politicians, the company representatives seemed a bit dissatisfied. They are here to solicit business. The host said, We have prepared for you a most popular auction in the world today. The auction items are provided by A-Class Slasher, codename Big Brother, Zangdez. This, this is actually a zombie auction. The host continued introducing, from the left is the famous actress Jin Hengi who turned into a zombie. Next to her is the idol singer Mayu. Last is the wealthy young lady Sushi. Due to the difficulty in capturing them, the starting price is 5 billion. Machangui got excited. He believed these auction items would definitely fetch a sky-high price. But Jin Zeza silently pushed away his hand. Yes, he couldn't hold back anymore. People often say you should earn money like a dog and spend it like a boss. But, as human beings, there should be a bottom line. As Jinzezu approached the stage step by step, Minali anxiously called out loudly because she had no idea what Jinzezu might do at this moment. In the next second, Jinzezu's hand fell, and all three auction items were killed by him. Kuejiang was shocked. Xiaoshengxiao found it interesting. Old Jin wonders what Jinzezu is doing. His action stunned even the host. The entire venue suddenly fell silent. Then Jinzezu picked up the microphone and said, Are you all beasts? Why are you all so perverted? Although I'm a rookie, a C-class slasher. It doesn't matter if you ignore me. But you're all slashers, you all live by your profession. Is it necessary to earn this kind of money? At this moment, he truly felt that the slasher profession was too absurd. People desperately avoid zombies to survive. And the people here are competing with each other. Competing who enjoys more, who owns more. Just then, a figure appeared behind everyone. It was A-class slasher Zangdez. This is how I make money. Do you have a problem with that? The man came from a refugee camp, but ruined someone else's auction. However, just as he was about to lose his life, he was saved by his own huge debt. Zangdez is the CEO of Lost and Victory. The company manages several A-class slashers, but he wasn't satisfied with this. With the completion of the luxurious and enjoyment JDC building, he was called a thug, pretending to be an entrepreneur. This report caused his company to lose 1.2 trillion won in market value. Anyone who hinders his money-making only has one fate, death. In a container at the dock, the captured person was the reporter who wrote the article. Although this person was backed by the state and dared to speak frankly. But in this chaotic era, killing was like a game. It's just that Zangdez, who came from a gangster background, had a more brutal way of killing. The reporter hated this thug in front of him. He swore that after turning into a zombie, the first thing he would do is find Zangdez, tear him apart, and bite him to pieces. The response he got was, I'm not a thug, I'm a robber. He used to be angry because the company lost 1.2 trillion, but now he is in a much better mood. Because turning you into a zombie is just the first step. Letting you eat a delicious family meal is my purpose. In a moment, you'll be the zombie who wants to eat your family the most. The reporter shouted, I'll kill you before I turn into a zombie. But the voice of the weak is always so powerless. The whole family dying together, you should thank me, trash. Then Zangdez ordered his subordinates to come take photos tomorrow morning. Send the photos to news department and tell them. If they don't plan to clarify this report, I can't guarantee similar incidents won't happen again. This is Zangdez. Seeing Zangdez walking towards Jinzez, Minali immediately wanted to step forward to explain. Before she could speak, she was slapped away by Zangdez. He used so much force that a dent formed on the wall. Jinzezu was anxious, but his step forward was blocked. At this moment, Zangdez asked again, this is how I make money, do you have a problem with that? The two had opposing views. Naturally, their conversation was unproductive. In the next second, Jinzezu swung the kitchen knife in his hand directly at Zangdez's neck. But this seemingly powerful strike was caught by Zangdez with just two fingers. The strength of an A-class is not to be underestimated. Just as Jinzezu was thinking, Zangdez revealed his tattooed arm, his fist falling like a nuclear bomb. Although Jinzezu blocked this punch, the force was so great that it broke both his hands and stunned him. Has the battle ended before it even began? Zangdez then raised a foot, hitting him squarely in the head, knocking him out with one blow. This is the strength of an A-class slasher. Jinzezu was like a child in front of him completely powerless. At this time, Zangdez liaison was also calculating the losses from this auction. 12 billion for the three auction items, 50 billion for damaging the image of the event, and 50 million for psychological treatment of the personnel. Total 62.05 billion won. Zangdez asked the liaison to add the cost for his foot injury. He didn't understand if this man was sick, biting his foot when he couldn't win. The final total is 62.512 billion. Zangdez naturally didn't believe this kid would have so much money. The 50 billion will be used as paper money to burn for his grave, and the rest can be asked from his company. At this moment, a fishing line wrapped around Zangdez's neck. It was Jin's hisen. What are you doing, old man? Zangdez, you're too rough with young people. But this person is not for you to deal with. At the same time, Kuijiang also walked over. Big brother, do you have 800 billion? Kuijiang knew very well what kind of person Zangdez was. Zangdez was confused. What 800 billion? What are you trying to say? So Kuijiang wanted to save Jin Zezu in her own way. The person you're about to kill owes my company 800 billion. 
Did you kill him to help him pay off his debts? If you like it, please give a thumbs up. The editor will continue to update. This man ruined the auction and was beaten to the point where he couldn't take care of himself. But he has a good boss who takes everything on her shoulders. Just because he said the same thing as someone in the boss's memory. At this moment, Kuiyejiang said, 800 billion, are you going to pay it for him? Zhangdez naturally wasn't easy to fool. He just thought Kuiyejiang was making excuses. But when he saw the evidence, Zhangdez fell silent. Why does this dog owe so much money? Kuiyejiang was also nervous in front of this big guy. But the game between the two was over in an instant. She asked Zhangdez to kill Jin Zezu immediately so she could get the debt back in a short time. Do you think I don't dare? Or do you think Lost in Victory doesn't have money? His hands once again pried open Jin Zezu's mouth. The assistant nervously said, Miss, this bastard won't really kill him because he's very shrewd. At this moment, Zhangdez turned to look at the guests. The current Zhangdez was really in a dilemma. If he didn't kill him, he would lose face. But if he killed him, the sound of 800 billion kept echoing in his mind. After a while, Zhangdez slowly stood up, as if he had made some decision. The next second, he actually grabbed Kuiyejiang's hair with one hand. You bitch, are you mocking me? At the same time, three figures had already appeared around him. Please remove your hand. We don't care about company relationships. We will kill you. As a result, the two companies had a grudge. Zhangdez said that one day he would kill Kuiyejiang. He left with his people amidst the whispers of the crowd. While the people from Tsuizhang Law Firm, under Kuiyejiang's command, immediately sent the two injured people to the nearest hospital and compensated the venue for the damages. At this moment, Kuiyejiang's mood was absolutely terrible. She led the Tsuizhang Law Firm people out of the venue. It was really too similar. You're all slashers. You all live by your profession. Is it necessary to earn this kind of money? At that time, Kuiyejiang's identity was still an A-class liaison. And the person who once said these words was the other founder of Tsuizhang Law Firm. An S-class slasher, codename Apostle, Zhang Ziyuheo. Was this really just a coincidence? In the hospital, Jin Zezu slowly woke up. Sitting beside him was Minali, who was less seriously injured. He regretted that his rashness had caused Minali to be injured. But Minali said, Understanding a slasher's personality and mood is also part of a liaison's job. So there's no need to apologize to her. Only then did he feel scared. Zangdez was too strong. Now he just wanted to know, is he also a slasher? A slasher like Zangdez? Minali explained that in the world of slashers, only two things measure a person's value. One is the power to kill zombies, called ability. The second is turning this ability into money, called wealth. Mr. Jin Zezu, the reason you lost to Zangdez is because your two attributes are too far from his. So you can only watch his arbitrary actions. So you mean we can only stare helplessly now? Manali's meaning was that he's not the only one who thinks this world has gone mad. This was also her feeling after visiting the slums. She wanted Jin Zezu to develop his ability and wealth. Only then could he voice his thoughts at the party, and then correct this upside-down world. Hearing this, Jin Zezu seemed to have found a direction in life. He asked Minali to arrange work for him immediately. But Kuiyejiang's reply was that there were no work arrangements, because Zhangdez seemed to have used his network. The company's potential clients were now collectively silent. Lost and Victory was selling at a loss, taking all the missions. It seems Jin Zezu had stirred up a hornet's nest this time. The boss just wanted to protect the employee's safety and was forced to conflict with another slasher company, directly causing the two companies to be at odds. The troubled Kuiyejiang believed Lost and Victory's behavior was a complete conspiracy targeting them. Now the key is how to break this blockade. Minali knew she had just persuaded Jin Zezu. Without follow-up promotion, this effort is likely to be in vain. So they can't stop now just because Jin Zezu doesn't have work. Therefore, she expressed willingness to accept any mission, regardless of pay. Kuiyejiang also knew that to break the deadlock, they needed to impress clients with trust and achievements. Then she searched under the table for a long time, finally pulling out a file. This was a difficult mission with low pay. But in the current situation, having a mission was better than none. Mission Location, Yinshan South Road, Jinhai City. This was a city developed from the 12th and 13th Territory Reclamation Campaigns. The development purpose was to expand the narrow area of the Fushan Protected Zone. It used to belong to Jiajiar Enterprises territory, but a suddenly appearing B-Class mutant, Code C-177, human-faced earthworm, caused Jiajiar Enterprises to lose 31 slashers, and 3,700 civilians. Since then, this place became hell on earth. At this time, Lost and Victory intervened. Zangdez led 50 slashers and killed the human-faced earthworm at the cost of half their manpower. They also successfully took over this place. This is the past of the Jin High blockade line. Looking at Zangdez's photo, Jin Zezu just wanted to tear it up. And this mission is to protect the construction of the Jin High blockade line. The project only lacks the western protective wall to be completed. Once built, it can greatly reduce Fushan's population density. 
The current problem is, the noise generated during the construction process attracted constant attacks from zombies. Although the construction team is now working in 24-hour shifts, progress is still very slow. Although they have organized personnel for protection, the continuously rising casualty numbers are staggering. Minali also raised a question. Only the western wall is unfinished, meaning other directions are already completed. How did you defend then? The man explained. Other directions are closer to Fushan. Material transport is faster. Plus at that time, the project funds were sufficient, hiring a considerable number of slashers. So although the captain's words were very implicit, Minali discovered from his words that there was no project payment at the moment. In other words, they were coming to do volunteer work. But the agreement between the government and Suezhong law firm was that after the completion of the Jinhai blockade line, land ownership would be given as compensation. After some consideration, the boss hadn't sent anyone over. Because protecting this large construction site, if the project is forced to stop, the slasher company will bear the main responsibility. Jin Zezu didn't know how to use his brain. He didn't think much. He just wanted to get started as soon as possible. Minali was quite speechless with him. The construction team's request was also simple. They would live at the forefront of the construction site, responsible for eliminating zombies that threaten the workers and protecting the surrounding environment. In front of them is the house provided by the construction site, a single room. This was already the best accommodation the construction team could provide. A single man and woman sharing a room, the atmosphere became quite awkward. Then Jin Zezu found a corner to sleep. He gave most of the space to Minali, telling her to sleep early and not get panda eyes. Hearing this, Minali's cheeks slightly reddened. In the quiet night, unexpected things often happen. Jin Zezu, half asleep, suddenly felt some figures pass by the window. He immediately woke Minali up, suspecting zombies outside. The next second, the door was knocked loudly. Were they surrounded by zombies? But the boss of the construction site didn't call to inform them. Could it be? Jin Zezu told Minali. Once the door opens, it means the battle begins telling her to find a place to hide. They started counting down, each number feeling like a century. When they counted to one, Jin Zezu forcefully kicked open the door. The military shovel followed with a whistling sound, drawing an arc, and slashed towards the enemy with a red light. The moment he saw clearly who it was, Jin Zezu froze. These weren't zombies at all, but staff members. Streamers and spray cans fell to the ground. The leader, trembling, said, Welk Welcome party. The construction team leader said, the completion of the Jin High blockade line can greatly reduce Fushan's housing pressure. This would naturally affect certain people's interests. The result is, at the party, everyone was talking about their work experiences during this time. Simply put, it was hell. The two-shift work schedule left everyone physically and mentally exhausted. But what's more deadly is that workers must remain highly alert at all times while working, because you never know when a zombie might appear behind you. This high-intensity work state directly slowed down the project progress. With such working conditions, do the workers get any compensation? Apart from basic living conditions like food and rest, there is no compensation at all. Some people's homes have already started losing electricity. What keeps the workers continuing this job? Houses. The isolation wall construction workers will be compensated with a house after completion. These are people with families, people who have lost their homes. Jinzez's arrival gave them hope for completion. Jinzez's heart was already a mix of emotions. He was once part of the army pursuing houses, but he didn't understand. The workers could be said to be poverty-stricken. Why did they still organize such a welcome party? Minali analyzed. There's a saying circulating in slasher companies. If you want to succeed in this world, you must let your vanity pay respect to others' vanity. In some actions aimed at saving or protecting humans, it's allowed to infuse emotions into slashers. This will make them realize what needs to be protected and also make them stronger. Talking so mysteriously, isn't it just flattery? That's right, but perhaps it can normalize your chaotic social interactions. Jin Zezu was extremely speechless. It can be said that he has social phobia, but when zombies come, he's definitely a reliable person. A house? Jin Zezu swore he would protect what they wanted. In the days that followed, in addition to exercising, Jin Zezu was called to clean up the zombies. This period of real combat greatly improved his skills, showing quite a strong aura. The workers were all excited about this hard-earned sense of safety. This is just my job, you don't have to praise me. Also, put down a ladder. I forgot to bring something when I came down earlier. At night, Minali is responsible for calculating the income. Now they can only rely on the government. With a subsidy of 5 million per zombie head, they are not really working for free. Old Jean also comes occasionally to beat him up. No, I mean to guide him. You only know how to attack with a shovel all day. Aren't you bored? You should learn to use ranged weapons. Old Jean asks Jin Zezu how his recent work has been. Jin Zezu says this is his first official task, and it feels very interesting. He will protect everything here. He won't let the tragedy he experienced happen here again. 
Hearing this, old Jean is also very pleased. It's just that he can't show it on his face. To prevent this little brat from becoming arrogant, old Jean throws the rope to Jinzezu and tells him, Playing with fishing line is still too advanced for you. Start with this for practice. On the way out, Zeo Zangi asks, Mr. Jinzezen, do you really need to do this? Old Jean explains that one day he will return to S-City. That day he will protect Fushan in my place. Old Jean is also looking forward to that day. Because this brat is growing up too fast. Inside the JDC building, Nashand, chairman of the Fushan Financial Holding Association, comes to seek Zangdez's help. But Zangdez doesn't understand. What does a wealthy man dealing in construction and land have to do with someone like him who catches zombies? Nashan demands that from now on, all conversation content must be kept confidential. Zangdez is of course happy to accept. Nothing attracts him more than making money. After getting Zangdez's repeated assurance, Nashan finally reveals his intention to destroy the blockade zone under construction in Jinhai City. The zone has reached its final stage. Once completed, the property value in Fushan will directly drop by 30% to 35%. Therefore, the association members unanimously agreed to take action. Meaning, zombies need to appear at the construction site and cause chaos there. Zangdez understood and smiled. This is equivalent to a major crime of treason, punishable by death if discovered. But with his personality, how could he resist the temptation of money? What he could get would be 10% of the shares of the Fushan Financial Holding Association. 10% of the shares is worth 20 trillion. And after cooperating with them, he'd have people when he needs people, money when he needs money. He would only make more money. Zangdez is a person good at calculation. He immediately agreed to this request. But if there's any sign of trouble, he would retreat with both failure and victory. When he learned that the slasher they hired was Jinzezu, with whom he had friction before, Zangdez showed no hesitation. He said he would do it cleanly and neatly, without leaving any trace. In a laboratory, in the center of a petri dish, there was an embryo of a human-faced earthworm. Surprisingly, someone was breeding them. The man just ate a wild boar and attracted a group of zombies to fight with him for food. There was also a giant earthworm wanting to compete with him on who has a bigger appetite. At this time, the two villains reached an agreement. To be on the safe side, Zangdez decided to get the Zomvex experimental subject. Zomvex is a pharmaceutical company specializing in virus research. After slashers capture mutants, they hand them over to Zomvax for payment. They are illegally researching mutants. The human-faced earthworm larva was also sold to them by Zangdez. If the larva is lost and happens to walk to Gene High on its own, this is Zangdez's plan. After discussion, Nashand also bid farewell. Before leaving, he once again reminded to keep it confidential. This is a matter of life and property. Then Zangdez asked Machangui to spread the news, saying that the human-faced earthworm that appeared in Jean High before still has surviving larvae, and to sneak into Zomvex to retrieve the larvae. Meanwhile, find 10 people with clean backgrounds from the refugee camp. I have a big use for them. Inside Zomvex company, the security guard found someone breaking in to steal the experimental subject. The intruder was Machangui. The security guard recognized him as a B-class slasher. He hurriedly claimed that he hadn't seen anything and wouldn't talk about it. But what can keep a secret better than a dead man? On the other side of the bridge, a car slowly drives towards 10 refugees. The person getting out of the car is Zangdez liaison. This time he came to give a task to the 10 people. Once the task contract is signed, the money will be directly transferred to their families' accounts. At this time, the contract is like a carriage that can take their families to heaven. The ten people rushed to sign their names on it. Everything was ready. The game was about to begin. The calm before the storm is always so peaceful. The workers were still immersed in the joy that the blockade line was about to be completed. Tonight, a celebration party was held at the construction site. The man told Jinzezu to relax. After all, it's rest time now. Everyone enthusiastically invited him to sit down. Jinzezu recalled the past. He realized it had been a long time since he sat with so many people. The last time was on his birthday when he was a child. Everyone's enthusiasm made him, who has social anxiety, involuntarily shed tears. At this moment, he just wanted to forget everything. The missing brother, parents who will never come back, and this cruel present world. Just then, the sudden sound of music made everyone feel confused. Because they were all required to reduce noise during work. How could they be playing music? No, this sound was coming from outside the construction site. At this time, outside the construction site, three cars playing loud music and flashing neon lights were speeding towards them. Closely following them was an endless tide of zombies. The three cars had no intention of stopping. They directly crashed into the blockade line's containers. The people getting out of the cars, dizzy from the impact, were the ten refugees. Before they could catch their breath, they were engulfed by the tide of zombies. The fire from the construction site attracted the zombies' attention. And this position was also where the blockade line was incomplete. The next second, 
a large group of zombies rushed in like a tidal wave. At this time, on top of the container, Machangui was holding the human-faced earthworm larva. He had been waiting here for a long time. Now all that's left was to deal with these iron lumps. The petri dish tumbled and fell to the ground under his gaze. The sound was drowned out by the noise of the zombie horde. No one would notice that death was about to appear. With the shattering of the petri dish, a lump of flesh appeared on the ground. The face on the flesh slowly opened its eyes and spoke, Mom, Mommy, inside the construction site dormitory. Workers suddenly woke up from their sleep. Was it an earthquake? Disaster always strikes when people are unprepared. The human-faced earthworm was seen devouring one dormitory after another. Before entering its stomach, the dormitories were crushed by its large mouth. It is easy to imagine the situation of the people inside. This was a B-class mutant. Code Z-177, the human-faced earthworm. Others fight zombies with all kinds of advanced weapons, but the man only had a wild boar bone. After a few swings, it was broken into pieces. This led the captain from the Department of Defense to take action personally. At this time, the zombie horde had rushed into the core of the blockade line. The first to be hit were the people at the celebration party. Everyone was shocked. Could it be that they were attracted by the music just now? Minali reminded Jinzezu to stay calm. If the slasher panicked too, the situation would be even more uncontrollable. The most important thing now was to evacuate the workers. This scene was very similar to when he was separated from his parents. Similar circumstances. Similar people. He remembered that sentence. Run, Jmin Jiju. We'll meet in Fushan. Back then, he was so helpless. Now, he was confident in his ability to protect those around him. He immediately assigned tasks. Minali was to go to the dormitory to get the shovel and rope. Everyone else retreat. I'll hold them off. The zombies were approaching. Jinzezu only had that wild boar leg bone he had just gnawed on. But it was better than fighting the zombie horde barehanded. A bone is just a bone. After a few swings, it broke into two pieces right in front of him. This was a life-threatening moment. He was already surrounded by a horde of zombies. The next second, a shovel and rope appeared by his side. It was Minali. Her task now was to reach the main control room at the construction site and establish contact with the head office. With a weapon in hand, Jinzezu also took a deep breath. Meanwhile, the fleeing people realized the zombies hadn't caught up. It seemed Jaju's protection was working. Now they had time to think calmly. They had nothing. All they had was a bit of hope for a house after the quarantine line was completed. Should they just give up like this? Clearly, some couldn't accept that. But now the construction site was filled with countless zombies. Perhaps the moment they went back, they'd die in the jaws of zombies. But how is that different from barely surviving in a refugee camp? If they lost this chance to live like human beings, who would sympathize with them? He wanted to go back and fight, to fight for his future, to protect his house with his own hands. Hearing this, everyone fell silent. Yes, he wasn't wrong. If given a choice, no one wants to live like cockroaches. Inside the construction site, zombies appeared from all directions. At the same time, he had to protect the civilians. Jinzezu was forced to try ranged attacks. He had to protect everything here. He absolutely couldn't let this place become a zombie paradise. But now he was outnumbered. Workers turning into zombies kept appearing, making his mood even heavier. This meant the number of zombies might be much more than what he could see. No one was organizing an evacuation. No broadcasts were guiding directions. The situation would only get worse. Just then, he heard the sound of a car behind him. It was a medium-sized truck. With a drift, it knocked down all the zombies behind Jinzezu. More than a dozen people got off the truck. A zombie was trapped at the front of the vehicle. A worker took out a flamethrower and immediately started burning the zombie. These people were the workers who had already escaped. Jinzezu didn't understand why they came back. Because before completion, this place was their home. The breach is getting bigger. It's difficult for one person to deal with them, isn't it? Since we're here anyway. Even if we die, we'll take down a few zombies with us. Jinzezu also understood, it wasn't the time to be sentimental. Well then, let's send them on their way. The promise from before wasn't just to protect them, but also the other workers building the quarantine wall for their homes. They chose to stay and fight, rather than run away. However, there was still a long way to go before the battle would end. The scene changes. Minali saw the collapsed main control room. This couldn't have been caused by ordinary zombies. What could it be? Could it be a high-level mutant? This isn't something a C-class Mr. Jinzezu can handle. How to notify the office now? Just then, speak of the devil. A huge figure appeared behind Minali. A-class liaison officer Captain Songanjing from the Special Dispatch Department of the Ministry of National Defense was reporting to A-class slasher, codenamed Lieutenant, Captain Renzigwang. Because the Ministry of National Defense hadn't received the evening report from the Jinhai construction site tonight, and they received news. 
That fire was spotted on the Zhudong Road section to Jinhai City. She suspected there was an abnormal situation at the Jinhai construction site. The Jinhai quarantine line is an important project of the interim government. Ren Zigwang decided to personally lead a team to check it out. The earthworm can actually perform the earth clone technique, beating the man until he could barely function. In the end, the man defeated it with great difficulty, only to be stabbed in the back by someone. At this time, with everyone's efforts, the number of zombies decreased rapidly, although there were still the occasional few. But the stage of desperate resistance has already passed. With a loud boom, a container kicked up a cloud of dust. Jinzezu finally showed a slight smile. He felt he had succeeded in protecting them. Just then, the sound of a motorcycle came from the distance. It was Minali. She was being chased by a huge creature. Seeing this, Jinzezu was shocked. Minali hurriedly said, The main control room has been destroyed by it. Now we can only hope that the workers who escaped to Fushan can call for help from the nearest slasher company. It will take at least an hour at the fastest, but... Seeing Minali speak hesitantly, Jinzezu also became anxious. Because this big guy in front of them, judging by its size, it should be a B-class mutant. Minali couldn't be sure if Jinzezu could handle it. Before this, Jinzezu had only encountered C-class mutants at most, but he had no choice. If he didn't step up, everyone here would die. One problem after another, Minali immediately began evacuating people. The human-faced earthworm was right in front of them. Its massive body was about 35 meters tall, about the height of a 10-story building. Jinzezu was like an ant in front of it. The next second, a huge mouth with sharp fangs lunged at him. The mouth hit the ground, creating an earth-shattering sound. The impact left a huge, deep crater. Jinzeza didn't go berserk like the night he killed 8,000 zombies. He had evolved. He used the rope in his hand to move nimbly in the air. He suddenly appeared in front of the human-faced earthworm, catching it off guard. Jinzezu forcefully plunged the shovel into the earthworm's body, and using this as a starting point, left a long gash on the surface of the human-faced earthworm. The earthworm immediately rolled on the ground in pain. Jinzezu kept changing positions in the air using the shovel and rope. At this point, Jinzezu didn't feel this B-class mutant was too difficult to deal with. He wielded the military shovel and struck at the human-faced earthworm. In the distance, Machangui was watching this scene through binoculars. He knew the human-faced earthworm was about to enter its second-stage attack mode. Suddenly, the human face retracted into the flesh. A humanoid flesh lump rose up behind Jinzezu. Such fast speed, Jinzezu was caught off guard and sent flying by a punch from the flesh lump before he could land. Another flesh lump appeared beneath him with a gurgling sound, but this time it wasn't humanoid, it was hand-shaped. The flesh lump pulled hard, and Jinzezu crashed into the ground, spitting out a mouthful of blood. He picked up the shovel and swung it in an arc around him. The flesh lumps had already disappeared by then. Just as he was puzzled, flesh lumps began to coalesce around him, this time, for appeared at once. Each flesh lump swung at him. Machangui shouted excitedly. Jinzezu was being beaten to a pulp. He knew if this continued, there would be only one outcome. He needed to find an opening to avoid these torrential attacks. Just then, a hook suddenly smashed into the human-faced earthworm. It was the workers from before coming to help him. The earthworm was angry. It wanted to kill these insects that were hindering it. More flesh lumps rapidly appeared on its surface. But Jinzezu, who had caught his breath, couldn't let it have its way. The rope tied up all the flesh lumps securely. This way, the flesh lump closest to him became a punching bag. He picked up the iron shovel, ready to destroy these flesh lumps. Suddenly, a katana pierced through his chest from behind. Jinzezu looked back in disbelief. Indeed, it was Machangui. He had stabbed him at this critical moment. Machangui's answer was straightforward. He was here today to take Jinzezu's life. Jinzezu knew about his grudge with Zangdes, but he was just one strike away from finishing off the human-faced earthworm. He might never be able to protect the people here again. Machangui dipped the sword in the blood of the human-faced earthworm. He wanted Jinzezu to turn into a zombie, to destroy the place he had desperately tried to protect. The next second, Machangui's eyes focused. The katana traced a flower pattern in front of his chest. What fell to the ground was a military dagger. It was Renziguang. At this moment, the two men stared at each other silently. The dripping sound of the human-faced earthworm's blood. The cries for help from workers being chased by zombies. Both seemed as if they couldn't hear anything. Renziguang asked slowly in an angry tone. What are you doing? The man had played with more daggers than he had eaten salt. Rules like, an inch longer, an inch stronger, were nothing but nonsense to him. His opponent was at his mercy. At this moment, 
Renziguang asked slowly in an angry tone. What are you doing? Renziguang, formerly of the Special Action Team of the Ministry of Land, Infrastructure, and Transport. Original name, Rinshirong. Before the zombie virus outbreak, he was a lieutenant in the Special Action Team. He had participated in the I Country War. The Special Action Team became well known under his command. This was his glory and belief. But his rapid rise to captain at a young age attracted jealousy from those with ulterior motives. During one operation, his team was betrayed by a superior, resulting in the entire team's annihilation. He himself paid the price of his right eye. His superior was met with his revenge. He killed his superior. This incident led to him being sentenced to 12 years in prison by the army military court. A single question, are you willing to fight for your country again, rescued him from prison. Because he had the skills the country needed most after the zombie virus outbreak. It was also the only skill he had. From then on, he changed his name to Renziguang, meaning to revitalize the army and be upright and honorable. His code name was Lieutenant. To commemorate his comrades who died with resentment. At this moment, Machangui was facing Renziguang. He thought to himself, damn, it's an A-class slasher. Renziguang shouted angrily, answer me, what are you doing? Machangui could only rack his brains for an excuse now. He hurriedly claimed he was here for rescue, but his action of stabbing Jinzezu with a sword stained with zombie blood just now had already alerted Renziguang. Stay calm, don't give yourself away. He then argued, this person looks very suspicious. I suspect he's the one who lured the zombies here. Just then, a cough interrupted his performance. Jinzezu used all his strength to point at Machangui. He deliberately lured the zombies here. He stabbed me while I was fighting the human-faced earthworm. Machangui was immediately so angry he stamped his feet. Renziguang also recognized Jinzezu. It's that kid who can ruin the atmosphere wherever he goes. At that time, Renziguang and his subordinates were also at the scene. The situation was exposed, so naturally there was nothing more to say. According to Article 2, Clause 3 of the Zombie Prevention Law, those who intentionally spread the zombie virus can be executed on the spot. Machangui said, thank you for helping me review. In other words, I can also suspect that you lured the zombies here. The battle between the two was about to erupt. The next second, the katana carrying a green light slashed towards the opponent. Rinzaguang dodged it by bending down. Machangui wanted to know how big the gap was between him and Rinzaguang. Apart from zombie killing techniques, he knew from before that slasher rank didn't represent actual strength. He had killed slashers of higher rank than him at the time. He was confident that in a one-on-one -on -one fight, he would never lose. Just as Renziguang lowered his head to avoid a sweeping strike, Machangui's eyes focused, the opportunity had come, but the strike he thought would be fatal was bizarrely dodged by Renziguang's strange movement. He was about to collapse. His sword strikes were like lightning, but not one could touch Renziguang. Renziguang was performing a dance of death in the battle. His movements were so graceful, and every time he got close, he would give Machangui a cut. Although each cut was shallow, it gave him a deeper sense of helplessness. Machangui realized the opponent was toying with him, but he was confused. Shouldn't Renziguang quickly end the battle and focus on dealing with the zombies outside the wall? Machangui didn't understand. Didn't understand why Renziguang was still here toying with him. This was because Renziguang hadn't personally fought in a long time. He wouldn't let the person before him die too quickly, given the chance to spar with a B-class slasher. On the other side, the workers were confused by the sudden appearance of a strange person, because since his appearance, he had been shouting at them. Well done, soldiers. Zombies fell like dominoes under his hand. Occasionally, sniper shots could be heard from the top of containers, harvesting zombies. Next, a figure dressed in full camouflage, resembling the surrounding grass appeared. Wielding an 800 kilograms iron hammer, he descended from the sky, sweeping across the battlefield like a whirlwind. Hearing the commotion, Machangui knew Renziguang wasn't fighting alone. He also knew he couldn't escape today. He hated the person in front of him. It was he who destroyed everything he had carefully planned. He also knew the gap between him and the person in front of him. As arrogant as he was before, he was now that anxious and uneasy. Renziguang didn't want to play anymore either. He spat out the cigar he was biting, hitting Machangui right between the eyebrows. The sparks made him completely blind, and Renziguang was already behind him. The first strike, a cold light flashed, stabbing straight into his arm, making him unable to lift his sword. The second strike, the blade like autumn frost, stabbed straight into his head. It was over. Jinzezu, watching Renziguang's clean and efficient moves, couldn't help but exclaim, so strong. At this moment, Renziguang had his arms spread, like a deity. Is this the level I can't surpass? Renziguang said leisurely. Kid, don't be nervous. This was a human trafficking scene. The man had just slept. 
and woke up to find he was about to be traded as goods. He was unwilling, wanting to end his life. At the Jean High quarantine wall site, everything had returned to calm, but this incident had left the place in a mess. The zombie horde and the human-faced earthworm had actually been held off by a C-class slasher. The workers' quick response plus the support of an A-class slasher finally successfully resolved this crisis. Jinzezu then passed out. He had gained Renziguang's approval. Given some time, this kid would surely become an extraordinary person. At this moment, a voice came. All dangers have been dealt with awaiting instructions. This person was Renziguang's subordinate, belonging to the Ministry of National Defense Special Dispatch Team, B-Class Slasher, codename Ice C. Mengshagen. Seeing his excited appearance, Renziguang helplessly said, Big guy, you're paid to do a job. Don't act like a child wanting praise. The urgent matter now is to get this kid to the hospital. Another subordinate just noticed the human-faced earthworm. Based on his experience, this was undoubtedly a B-Class mutant. Was it really killed by this kid? The one asking was named Zangsili. B-Class Slasher, codename Full Burst. Renziguang also wanted to know the answer to this question. Everything would have to wait until this kid woke up. The last person directly hoisted Jinzezu onto his shoulder. Although this person had only killed 521 zombies, he had killed a B-Class mutant, so he was exceptionally promoted to B-Class. His name was Songzuian, codename Prairie. With this, the Jean High Quarantine Line incident came to an end. Time flies. In the H Country Army Armed Forces Hospital, Jinzezu slowly opened his eyes. What he saw was a ceiling both familiar and unfamiliar. This is a hospital. How many times had he been hospitalized recently? First time, second time, this was already the third time. Was he going to spend his whole life in hospitals? Meanwhile, he discovered there were other people in the room. It was Renziguang's team. Jinzezu wondered what they were doing. As expected of an A-class, his perception was higher than ordinary people. Renziguang immediately noticed Jinzezu was awake. Renziguang kept rubbing his brow. Jinzezu was still pretending to be asleep because he felt he already had one creditor. This person wouldn't be here to collect debts like old Jean, would he? The next second, Renziguang directly pinched his nose. Damn it, get off, you pervert. Renziguang was dumbfounded. This kid was quite ungrateful. Jinzezu said, everyone who helped him, wasn't their ultimate goal just for money? He questioned Renziguang. You're waiting here for me to wake up? Isn't it for the same reason? Mengshagen was shocked. Damn, how did you know? Can you read minds? The scene suddenly became deathly silent. Everyone looked at him in disbelief. The next second, Jinzezu was about to jump out the window to escape, completely disregarding which floor this was. The scene changes. Everyone calmed down. Mengshagen was also tied up securely. Renziguang said, You little brat, you've completely misunderstood. No matter what, we successfully protected Jean Hai, so I won't ask you for compensation. However, private enterprises will provide most of the funds to build the quarantine line. It's an exchange for government protection of their business operations. Renziguang's meaning was, After this incident, the government will submit a report to the legislature. They might use this as an excuse to close the construction site. In other words, the employer might go bankrupt. In the end, you won't get a single hair. Jinzezu wasn't concerned about himself. He was concerned about the workers working here. Those who fought desperately to protect their own houses. Renziguang was stunned. He didn't understand why Jinzezu was concerned about these people's houses. Rather than his own slasher honor. Because in Jinzezu's eyes, honor could neither shelter you from wind and rain, nor help you find your family. He cared more about helping those people, so they wouldn't lose their homes again. Yes, compared to houses. He would rather tell the workers that slashers won't appear when zombies come. He didn't know if this should be called stupidity, but at least they could still fight with all their might. This made Renziguang smile knowingly. After that incident, he had always thought the chaos of the world led to the loss of humanity. Unexpectedly, he could still meet someone with such passion. He then ordered his subordinates to have Captain Songanjing stop submitting the report. Renziguang then extended an olive branch to Jinzezu. Lieutenant, don't go too far. At this moment, Kuiyejiang burst in with Heshangsiu. It's the tomboy. Jinzezu was startled by the sound of the door opening, followed by Manali's various examinations. She was truly sorry for not being able to notify the office in time. Kuiyejiang was also so anxious she became incoherent, first saying Renziguang had to pay 800 billion to take him away, then saying even if paid, it wouldn't be allowed. The little girl still couldn't break her bad habit of wanting to keep slashers by her side, just like Zhang Ziyuheo. That's my boss's business, don't meddle, old man. The atmosphere between the two sides was tense. Renziguang wanted to teach this presumptuous kid a lesson, but he was stopped by Songzuian beside him. He let Renziguang know they could rent Jinzez. Then he told Kuiyejiang this was mutually beneficial. Both sides reached an agreement. C-class slasher, codename Shovel, real name Jinzezu. In massive debt, attack rating, 4 stars, defense rating, 2.5.
two stars. Jinzezu said he wasn't a commodity and refused to be rented out. The response he got was, Kuiyejiang, pay me back 10 billion won right now. Renziguang, should I submit the report right away? You two devils. I don't want to be rented out. The matter was settled. Next, Zangdez, it's time to settle accounts. The man originally had ambitious plans for capture, but the other side used connections to avoid the crisis. In the end, it became a case of dead men tell no tales. Inside the luxurious JDC building, Zangdez was boasting with his arms around beautiful women because he couldn't think of any reason why the mission would fail. Suddenly, the door was forcefully opened. It was his exclusive liaison officer. Boss, something terrible has happened. Zangdez hadn't expected Machangui would fail. The liaison officer reported. Not only were all zombies eliminated, but there was also the body of a human-faced earthworm at the scene. What exactly happened at the scene? The most important thing now is how to resolve this. It's time to use some connections. Zangdez's phone book wasn't short of big shots, like a three-star army general, an opposition party congressman, a two-star military commander, ruling party congressman, and so on. He wanted everyone to drop what they were doing and gather at the building entrance. If the military comes, stall for time immediately, because he sensed danger was approaching. The scene changes. A camouflage sedan stopped in front of the JDC building. It was Renziguang's team. The moment he saw JDC, the well-traveled Renziguang marveled. How many evil deeds must one do in this apocalyptic world to build such a luxurious building? The moment they entered the building, he hadn't expected a large group of people to be waiting for them and each one was built like a bear. Is the first floor of this JDC building a gym? Seeing that an A-class slasher had personally arrived, everyone's expressions became extremely serious, but the honor of lost and victory forced them to surround Renziguang. Meng's Hegan's eyes were sharp. What? Want to fight? Zangsili's eyes flashed coldly. You don't want to let us pass? The next second, the liaison officer spoke. The chairman is very busy now and has no time to see you. This is a private property area. What business do you have coming so late? Renziguang calmly replied. You lured zombies to the Jin High quarantine line so late. So what's wrong with us coming late? The liaison officer feigned innocence. What Jin High quarantine line? What zombies? What are you talking about? Damn, you really know how to play dumb. Then Renziguang started reading the zombie prevention law. According to Article 10, Clause 1 of the zombie prevention law, intentionally spreading the zombie virus, individuals or groups directly or indirectly assisting in its spread are defined as treason under criminal law. Hearing this, the group of underlings' expressions became even more serious. Accomplices can be sentenced to life imprisonment. The scene became deathly silent. I'll say it again. We don't know what you're talking about. You have no right to trespass on private property. Thank you for your understanding. Renziguang hadn't expected. This guy would ignore his warning. Zhang Sili was desperately reminding him. To stay calm, they needed to present evidence at least. Meng's Hagen slowly opened the back. Inside was Machangui. You say you don't know. Is this one of your people? The group of underlings was shocked. The liaison officer scolded everyone to be quiet. Even if Machangui was involved, it does not prove it is related to them. Now please show your arrest warrant. Otherwise, please leave on your own. Renziguang even bit his cigar in half. Stop talking nonsense, brothers, attack. Meng's Hagen was delighted. He asked the rest of the team not to move. He wanted to fight them all alone. Zhang Sili, Song Zuyin said, why should we listen to you? No way. Renziguang said, whether to sentence them or not, we'll decide after we go up and get evidence. But those obstructing official duties, use force to drive them away. The liaison officer shouted, stop them. The group of underlings rushed towards the enemies with weapons, but the underlings only use was to buy time. How could they be a match for three B-class slashers? Renziguang hadn't even taken his hands out of his pockets. He kept walking forward as if taking a stroll. Those trying to stop him were immediately dealt with before they could touch him. At this time, a B-class slasher came out, codenamed Brown Bear, Heyong P.I., but he was only on stage for three seconds before being taken out by one punch from Renziguang. The gap was too big. The liaison officer immediately turned to run. He hadn't expected the situation to turn so quickly. He kept complaining. Complaining that Renziguang came while other slashers were out working. Complaining why the elevator doors closed so slowly. A hand had already caught the elevator door. A fierce eye appeared in the door crack. It's over, the liaison officer thought. You're taking the elevator and not waiting for me? The elevator went straight to the 36th floor. The liaison officer looked at his own dick penitently in the elevator. Zangdez, it's quite difficult to meet you. You're in big trouble. Really big trouble. I must invite you to have coffee in the Ministry of National Defense Interrogation Room. Zangdez said into the phone. Yes, 
Yes, thank you. I'll remember this favor. Seeing Zangdez ignoring him, Renziguang flicked his cigar. Hey, punk, I'm talking to you. Didn't you hear? The answer he got was, when adults are on the phone, children should keep quiet. Cut the crap. Do you know how serious this is? I'm arresting you for treason. Treason? What a joke. Go ask your superiors. They've decided how to handle this case. Renziguang was confused. Who were you just talking to on the phone? Your boss. In the end, the Jean High quarantine line incident was ruled as Machangui's personal crime. The one who instructed him was Nashan, chairman of the Fushan Financial Holdings Association. However, during the trial, Nashan mysteriously disappeared. The case was also closed. Captain Songanjing of the Special Dispatch Department of the Ministry of National Defense reported, Nashan was found hanged to death this morning. Ren Ziguang naturally didn't believe it. A pampered person would choose such a way to commit suicide. But all clues disappeared in their infancy. To silence Ren Ziguang, the higher-ups promoted him to major. No one can be promoted to major without significant accomplishments. That's a rule in the military. What kind of merit did I achieve? The next day, a stretch Lincoln stopped in front of the H Country Army Armed Hospital. A man dressed as a priest slowly opened the car door. It was the A-class slasher belonging to the Jehovah's Holiness Church, codenamed Priest by Bakesian. After the zombie virus outbreak, the Times created heroes. Some rose to power through their abilities. Naturally, some rose by deceiving people. This is why he was rated an A-class slasher despite having zero zombie kills. By Bakesian led the priests straight into the hospital. He even took off his mask along the way. This naturally drew a crowd of patients. Some wanted to shake his hand. Some wanted him to cure their chronic illnesses. But they were all kept at bay by four priests. By Bakesian then prayed to God. He wanted everyone to understand. Miraculous redemption and eternal prosperity are in the hearts of everyone present. Don't expect others to create miracles. Live steadfastly according to your own heart. He would pray for everyone in this humble place. The crowd cheered as if they had been injected with adrenaline. Holy Father, Holy Father, Holy Father. For humans, the most frightening things are the unknown. The appearance of ghosts is more terrifying than traffic accidents. A mentally ill person with a knife is more terrifying than an armed criminal. Deaths caused by zombies usually instill fear. Before the virus outbreak, Bai Baixian was just an ordinary stage actor. On the day of rehearsal, a blood-covered man walked onto the stage. He frantically attacked those present. In the end, he was the only one left alive. He had killed everyone. He decided to give an answer to those living in fear. An answer they had to face. He taught the citizens. Zombies are not scary. They can be eliminated. With just a few words from him, thousands of people voluntarily took up arms. Under his leadership, the situation gradually stabilized. Many people were no longer afraid of zombies. And he established the Jehovah's Holiness Church. From then on, he appeared in people's sight as the CEO of the Jehovah's Holiness Church. At the same time, he was also an ambitious man. He believed that humans should forget the concept of zombies. God has divided human and non-human species. God has mercy on humans. Only by conquering can humans have hope. This is the tenet of the Jehovah's Holiness Church. The elevator went all the way up. The assistant didn't understand. Why did Bybaxian come all this way to see a C-class slasher? This person may not be trustworthy, and his strength doesn't seem to have any merit. Indeed, Jinzeza doesn't look like a person with power and wealth. He can't compare to those B-class slashers in the church. The king, Mr. Leong. The prosecutor, Mr. Haruzi. The missionary, Mr. Jean. Even the abbot of the monastery. But recently, the power gap between slashers is at a golden balance point. Every company is training slashers in large numbers. But the results are not obvious. He believes Jinzezu can break the balance between slashers. He killed 8,000 zombies in one night. Then he survived the conflict with the Ministry of Land and Natural Resources. He even killed a high-ranking official from the Resources Department, standing in opposition to the government. After becoming a slasher for the Tsuezhong law firm, he had friction with Zangdes. The Jinhai blockade incident also allowed him to establish a close relationship with the Ministry of National Defense. To be honest, have you ever seen someone who can navigate amongst so many forces and still remain as steady as an old dog? Except for Apostle Zhang Ziyuheo, Bai Baixian hadn't seen anyone who could shake up the situation like this. He thought this person might become the next Zhang Ziyuheo, so recruiting Jin Zezu seemed very necessary. The moment the door opened, Bai Baixian returned to the era of actors. His exaggerated performance scared Jin Zezu and Minali speechless. He boasted about Jin Zezu's achievements, a group of zombies, and a B-class mutant. It's truly a revolutionary achievement. The term, savior, was created specifically for you. Before Jin Zezu becomes a servant of God, he expresses his highest respect and gratitude for Jin Zezu's contributions as a human. You are no longer fighting alone. Because today, a powerful company has decided to fight alongside you. 
Minali understood this man's intentions and quickly tried to stop him. The priest beside her stopped her. The Jehovah's Holiness Church is willing to offer Jinzezu a high-paying position. Jinzezu was bewildered. From entering the door until now, this person hadn't introduced himself. Then by Bakesian introduced himself. A class slasher of the Jehovah's Holiness Church, codename Priest. Is this to recruit me into the church? Are cults this rampant now? Looking for followers in the hospital in broad daylight. Clearly, Jinzezu wasn't swayed by flattery. He expressed no interest in joining and asked them to leave quickly. This is someone who can ruin the atmosphere anywhere. Bybexian pondered, then snapped his fingers. To commemorate Jinzezu's achievements, he wanted to give him something. If this Bybexian wasn't in the apocalypse, he'd definitely make a fortune in sales. The next second, Jinzezu was stunned, seeing a large box of money. Bybexian said he could help pay off the 800 billion he owed to the Tsuizhong Law Firm. From now on, he wouldn't have to be a slave to the Tsuizhong Law Firm. The Jehovah's Holiness Church will provide a more noble identity. Come, child, come be a servant of God. The man was leased to the Ministry of National Defense, with a down payment of 2 billion. But this might be the country's last action. The Jehovah's Holiness Church, which operates with money, offered to pay off Jinzezu's debt. But the condition was to join the Jehovah's Holiness Church. Come, child, come be a servant of God. This is a very attractive offer, 800 billion, equivalent to the reward for an A-class mission taken by an A-class slasher. And by Bakesian brought cash, showing his sincerity and determination. Minali was very puzzled about what he wanted to do, willing to spend so much money on a C-class slasher, but she was from the Tsuizhong law firm. She had to stop his behavior. Then she interrupted by Bakesian. I'm sorry, Mr. Bai. Although you're the CEO of one of the top slasher groups, but there are rules. You can't poach a slasher with a special contract. Just then, Jinzezu raised his hand to stop Minali from continuing. Minali shuddered. Mr. Shovel, what are you doing? Seeing this, Baibaxian immediately took out a contract and said that although Mr. Shovel doesn't know about the Holy Church, he's not a fool, you know? Jinzezu just didn't want Minali to waste her breath because he wouldn't sign this contract. Whether you're a savior, or a priest. What you want is no different from that tomboy. 800 billion isn't the price of a piece of gum. You'll definitely make me do anything to earn it back for you. By Bakesian tried to quibble. But Jinzeza knew this was probably just wordplay. Just changing from slave to the more pleasant sounding worker. Changing homeless to refugee. All debts will be repaid with him as either a sacrifice or an executioner. This depends on his value to this world, because that's a refugee's world, and it's the world Jinzezu has experienced. The liaison officer cursed. This is an insult to the Holy Father. Bybexian didn't say anything, but he knew this was the essence. Before leaving, he told Jinzezu, Today's offer is always valid for you. When you can't make it at Chuizhong, you can come find him. The next second, Manali's lips curled into a smile. She immediately hugged Jinzezu, expressing her belief in his loyalty. Loyalty? Kuiyejiang and Bai Baixian are both creditors in fact. He just chose a person who wasn't hypocritical. Then, Minali told Jinzezu about the rental. The Ministry of National Defense offered to rent him for work with a 2 billion won deposit. But Kuiyejiang was anxious because she suspected the Ministry of National Defense had other intentions. But she also knew she couldn't let Jinzezu carry the debt forever. So she agreed to this contract. This is a big deal. Minali didn't dare delay. When she saw the mission content, she was stunned. Operation Codename, Killing Salamander. Local officials all know that the interim government's primary task is to maintain the status quo. When variables appear, the government's task is to remove them. The variable appeared at the Wurjin nuclear power plant. The power plant was still operating normally. Although the zombie virus risk was high, it had luckily survived. But according to the reconnaissance team's report, signs of decay appeared at the power plant. The most dangerous was the Weijin nuclear power plant area. Due to the aging of the cooling water system, the core temperature was slowly rising. The killing salamander operation was proposed to stabilize the Wurjin nuclear power plant. Renziguang asked, how many people and equipment are needed to stabilize the nuclear power plant? 20 former nuclear power plant engineers, 100 workers are needed. In addition, 15 heavy high-tech equipment vehicles are required. Considering the current situation, it's difficult to use air transport. The current plan is to go by land. In other words, to reach the power plant in a convoy. However, the convoy will produce enormous noise, and it will take a long time to reach the destination. The huge noise will attract large numbers of zombies. This is the purpose of this meeting. Renziguang's team alone is obviously not enough. Song Zuiyan flashed, placing a list in front of each chief. This is a list of slashers participating in this operation. The scene shifts. Jinzezu looked surprised. He had never seen such a grand scene since the apocalypse. Large equipment vehicles, neatly arranged soldiers. Renziguang asked him, 
Never seen such a grand lineup before? This operation is not on the same level as reclaiming territory or the Jin Hai defense battle. At the same time, this operation is not defense, but offense. Perhaps, it's also the country's last operation. The last operation? Jin Zezu didn't understand. Ren Zeguang said he would keep an eye on him, hoping everything goes smoothly. Codename Killing Salamander, set off. The man was placed in the cannon fodder camp, but with his own abilities, he not only gained the recognition of A-class slashers, but also won the admiration of his teammates in the convoy. Bulldozers in front cleared obstacles, all vehicles followed closely behind. Although the convoy's progress was slow, it moved forward in an orderly manner. Jinzeza sat in a vehicle, there was no one wearing military uniforms here. Obviously, they were all civilian slashers. Some of them, he had seen in the documents Minali gave him. Every slasher company has its own intelligence gathering channels, although they can't cover all slashers. This is a reference for original clients to decide whether to use the company or external slashers. After careful reading, you'll find that each person has different abilities. In other words, you can find some teammates who can complement your weaknesses, forming a solid squad. Jinzezu then drew an inference. He wanted to find out the strengths of enemies who are like fierce beasts. Obviously, he placed himself in a very low position. Minali felt that his way of thinking had made a big improvement. Jinzezu was embarrassed by the praise. But why didn't the client leave any comments about him in the data? Zuwan, C-Class Slasher. His main weapon is a self-made air gun. Can fire compressed bolts and nuts. Katie Anhu, C-Class Slasher. His main weapons are a custom long pole and a backpack. The backpack can unfold into a battle shield. There's also Jaya Luxi, Jinji Axiu, and seven others. Probably all C-Class on this car. Jinzezu glanced. That kid is B-Class Slasher belonging to Judge Yar Enterprise. And Shanlin who has killed 12,041 zombies and two B-Class mutants. Jinzezu was very impressed with her, the youngest B-Class Slasher in history. And Shanlin also noticed someone staring at her. Jinzezu immediately turned his head, pretending nothing happened. And Shanlin knew that Jinzezu had been observing people on the car all along. She told him there's no need to pay too much attention, because within three hours after leaving Fushan, half of the people on the car will die. She hoped Jinzezu wouldn't be among them. And tomorrow, another half will die. Jinzezu didn't understand her meaning. Looks like you're still a rookie. Haven't you noticed that the convoy formation is a matrix array? The lead vehicles are large trucks that have been modified. They push away obstacles on the highway. Vehicles carrying heavy equipment and engineers are in the middle. Protecting them are slashers from the Ministry of National Defense and soldiers and Humvees. And on the outermost layer is us. Trucks carrying civilian slashers protect those Humvees. Do you understand now? We are like a wall of flesh and blood. Jinzeza shouted angrily. So what? He asked in Shanlin, what if after three hours, more than half of the people on the car are still alive? The topic has gone off track. And Shanlin just wanted to express that this is a hopeless mission. Jinzezu also stated, Everyone is trying hard to complete missions and earn money. Yet you're here shaking morale, is that appropriate? Jinzezu wanted to bet with this scared little cat. The two raised their weapons and confronted each other. The heavy atmosphere was broken by their tense standoff. Suddenly the convoy came to an abrupt stop. A soldier ran over shouting. Zombie horde appeared on the right flank of the convoy. They're rapidly approaching us. The left flank has already engaged in battle. Just as the soldier was telling everyone to prepare for battle, a dark shadow flashed by, knocking down that soldier. And Shanlin said this was just the first one to die. Someone just died, and all you care about is numbers. The bulldozers must push away abandoned vehicles scattered on the highway. Therefore, noise is inevitable. The convoy can't stay in one place. Let the slashers go fight. Those who are alive should protect themselves as they move forward. One kilometer, ten kilometers. Every step the convoy takes is paid for with blood. And Shanlin and Jinzezu seemed to be competing to see who could kill more. One was like a war god, the other was like Superman. Making Renziguang feel these slashers were quite useful after all. The shovel was even more than he expected, although they had to pay a heavy price. The goal remained unchanged, Wurjin nuclear power plant, returning the country to its starting point. On the other side, Zuan was also killing crazily. Bolts and nuts were loaded into the special gun barrel, as if they cost nothing. Just as he was frantically firing, the gun barrel jammed. At the critical moment, Jinzezu rushed over to save him. No one is allowed to die without my permission. He wanted to correct that child's thinking. Zuo Wan expressed deep gratitude. If it wasn't for Jinzezu, he would have certainly died just now. Three and a half hours had passed. Everyone was panting heavily, but not a single person was missing from the car. Jinzezu ran to An Shanlin, showing off. And Shanlin pouted. If it wasn't for you meddling, half of them would have died long ago. But did they specify no saving people when making the bet? 
and Shanlin fell silent. She knew she had lost, and wanted to know what the punishment was. You're big and tall. You're not thinking of hitting a minor, are you? In the slums, we call it smashing watermelon. Don't move, or I'll blow your head off. Ouch, that hurts. The operation had been going on for four hours. They were a group of slashers who had never worked together before. They represented the top civilian combat power during the zombie virus epidemic. Yet this group with top combat power recognized Jinzezu. The man got addicted to smashing watermelon, hitting the girl hard whenever he saw her, just because he wanted the girl to know. Integrating with those around her could improve her anxiety and unease. From Fushan to Asian, the distance is about 200 kilometers. Every meter forward comes at a price, because the next second, you might see something you don't want to see in the rearview mirror. Team 12 discovered a horde of zombies from the rear and requested the slasher to be deployed. Countless battles had already made many people numb. At the same time, the number of personnel was rapidly decreasing. Slashers mechanically swung their weapons, because what was left on the road were not just zombie remains, but also comrades who were just chatting moments ago. In the battle that just ended, the 12th, 13th, 14th, 15th, and even the entire left flank of the convoy lost an average of two members per squad. The vacant positions will be filled by one to two slashers from the army. Renziguang believed the situation was still under control, because according to the original plan, by this point, the civilian slashers should have been completely exhausted. The convoy would form a second barrier with military personnel. At this rate, he believed they would reach the Wurjin nuclear power plant soon. Zangsali said he seemed to understand the intention of the upper leadership. In this operation, they had a noticeably higher survival rate when in the middle. What a cruel leadership care. The civilian slashers not only had to endure physical fatigue, but also resist mental despair. But those who could survive were undoubtedly the elite among elites. Just like Anne Shanlin, codename Ripper, from Judge Yar Enterprise, who was racing through zombie hordes, able to take care of others during battle, Quibide, codename Manbear from Jehovah's Holiness Church. Using wisdom to grasp the situation, P.O. Zengwo, codename instructor from Judge Yar Enterprise. Of course, there's also that kid who can ruin the atmosphere anywhere. But he's also someone who instinctively makes people resonate. Jinzezu, B-class slasher from Tsuezhong Law Firm, codename Shovel. He performed the best among everyone. They, with the most zombie kills, had the fewest casualties among all the squads. Renziguang believed his judgment wasn't wrong. At this time, An Shanlin was gazing at that figure. He was so popular among teammates. Was her thinking wrong? After a short rest, Renziguang ordered walkie-talkies to be given to specific personnel. This would allow orders to be issued faster, thus increasing the convoy's survival rate. By evening, they finally saw the sign for Weijin Town. No one cheered, because the work had just begun. Qingbei County Weijin Nuclear Power Plant Area Battle Damage Report Military personnel lost 20%, civilian slasher lost 60%, much fewer casualties than expected. After this mission, these slashers will undoubtedly receive high attention from the military. They were growing into experts for this operation. Pass the order down. Let everyone know we've reached the destination and are starting to set up camp. We're not going to the power plant today. Everyone rest. The Weijin escort operation is over. Cars form a circle outside, with personnel tents inside. Jinzezu stretched. He found An Shanlin sitting alone by the campfire, not even noticing his approach. He walked up and gave her another watermelon smash. You're addicted to smashing. Since we're still alive and made it here, let's do it again. Bastard, how long do you think you can live? With these words, the scene fell into silence. Jinzezu probably understood why she was so pessimistic. He took out chocolate someone had given him and asked An Shanlin if she wanted to try integrating with them. Believe in yourself, you can do it, Jinzezu said. After becoming a slasher, everything around him seemed to change. In this depressing world, becoming an unparalleled slasher even scared him. Especially for those who crawled out of the slums. Not everyone has that kind of resolve. And Shanlin slowly unwrapped the chocolate. If you want to lecture me, tell me on the way back. I don't listen to the nonsense of people who die before me. The night passed without incident. The next morning, all personnel were ready to go. Renziguang gave a speech on top of a car. Today is the day we enter the nuclear power plant. We don't know how many enemies are inside. We don't know who among us standing here will live to the end. The success of this operation means eliminating potential dangers and reviving hope for the country. In other words, everything we do today will determine the future of the country. The man used the skill taught by his master for the first time, killing all zombies in the scene with just one move. His teammates were stunned. Weijin Nuclear Power Plant Complex After the collapse of the A country, it became one of the largest nuclear power plants. This place used to be a gathering of talents. However, now the nuclear power plant has become a dangerous time bomb, a place full of crises. At this time, everyone gathered together. This was the last war meeting before entering the nuclear power plant. The Weijin Nuclear Power Plant is composed of several units merged together. 
The situation inside the plant can't be confirmed at the moment. The purpose of the meeting is to assign target sites for each squad to sweep. The sweep team leaders are composed of four slashers holding walkie-talkies, eight slashers from the military and four soldiers from the Ministry of National Defense. Each team is configured with five to six people. Mission, eliminate all dangers within the designated site. Jinzezu was assigned teammates from the same car as before. This made them jubilant, because they all knew that during the escort mission, their team had the lowest casualty rate. And Shanlin, as a team leader, was also assigned team members. But the watermelon smashing incident had spread, and everyone came up to pat her head. If anyone dares to make fun of me again, I'll make sure to send you eating dog shit. No zombies were seen outside the plant, they must have left the area. Each squad smoothly arrived outside their target site. Renziguang was in the control room as the overall commander. Weijin Nuclear Power Plant Area Reconstruction Mission, codename Killing Salamander Operation, now begins. Each squad broke in. According to the data, there were at most a dozen zombies inside the plant. All were former on-duty personnel. Although the number was small, finding them in such a large site was also a big problem. The helmeted man suggested splitting up to search. A fist has strength when clenched, the enemy is hidden, and we're exposed. Splitting up is asking for death. The helmeted man believed that acting alone was conducive to quick attacks and retreats. This way, there would be a higher survival rate. Zuawan said the helmeted man's idea wasn't wrong because sticking together also needs to consider stamina issues. The longer the time, the more stamina and attention will decrease. The possibility of being ambushed will increase. How can we complete the mission safely and without losses? Jinzezu took out the building plants. He asked Zuawan to find the most central, spacious, and well-connected place in the plant. This was undoubtedly the central hall located inside the plant. The central hall was connected to all the network points inside the plant, as well as the outside offices and auxiliary facilities. Jinzez's idea was to sing loudly here. As long as the sound was loud enough, it would cause an echo inside the nuclear power plant, and they would only need to wait for the prey to come. At this time, zombies were wandering aimlessly. Suddenly, an off-key singing voice came. They all turned towards the direction of the sound at the same time. Just a moment ago, when Jinzezu proposed this idea, everyone was surprised. What kind of brain is this? But according to his analysis, Zombies are especially sensitive to sound and light. We need to maintain formation while reducing energy consumption, so we have no choice but to actively lure them out. This is the reason for coming to the central hall. He learned this method from Pia Shang Jun. The scene shifts, zombies appeared at almost every exit. Some zombies even jumped down directly from the upper floors. Shit, weren't there supposed to be only about a dozen? Jinzeza shouted loudly, Don't blink, don't turn around, everyone form a circle, kill the zombies rushing over. Trust your teammates, and trust your back to them. The intelligence was wrong. There were far too many zombies. Some people were already entangled with zombies. Zuwan's bolts were also used up. The time was too short. No way to reload. At this moment, Jinzezu in the middle once again became superhuman. The scene of old Jean teaching him for the first time appeared before his eyes. This is the feeling. Zuwan anxiously said, Captain, we're surrounded. This is a beautiful story of a fishing rod and zombies. The rope rotated like a propeller. Jinzez's eyes flashed coldly. The words lie prone slowly came out of his mouth. The next second, a red light covered the entire scene. All zombies seemed to be paused. Then, under everyone's gaze, they were all cut in half. Zuwan wondered if this guy was still human. The master once told the man, playing with fishing line, you're still too green. Use rope first. And the man excellently inherited his master's skills. His first use amazed everyone. All his teammates showed the same shocked expression he had when he first saw his master use fishing line. Zuwan knew Jinzezu's B-class evaluation was under review. But with such attack power, passing the review was just a matter of time. This kid was very similar to someone he had seen before. Belonging to Jujiar Enterprise. Killed 100,063 zombies. Codename Fish Market, Hanhua Elder. At that time, he said to him, Are you injured? I'll help you get through this crisis. This was a kind of care from a superior to a subordinate. Jinzezu didn't understand why Zuawan was staring at him. Had he been bitten by a zombie? But Zuawan was thinking about reporting to Hanhua Elder as soon as they got back. Missing out on such a person would be a loss for Judge Yara Enterprise. Zuawan immediately went forward to get closer to him. You kid are actually this strong. You've been hiding it well. But Jinzezu knew. For those A-class slashers, he was just an ordinary person. Alright, let's do one last check for any stragglers. A team leader Jinzezu successfully cleared the target site. The cleanup work at Weijin Nuclear Power Plant wasn't difficult. Firstly, because this was a national secret facility. The number of personnel was limited to a certain range. 
So the infected personnel weren't enough to threaten the cleanup team. Is this the last one? I was just getting into the groove. And Shanlin's fierce eyes when killing zombies made people's hair stand on end. There shouldn't be any more here. The captain is really amazing. Why don't we put away our weapons first? B-team leader and Shanlin cleared the target site. Secondly, the cleanup team leaders were thoroughly familiar with the site structure. This was thanks to the site structure maps distributed before the cleanup. However, there would always be some self-important guys. There's a duty room 10 meters ahead. It's very likely to have a large number of zombies gathered. Let's be careful, advance cautiously, and maintain proper distance. This drunkard wants to command me, yet he hides in the back. Why do these idiots listen to this drunkard? I'll walk how I want to walk. Hey, you idiot. I told you to maintain distance between you. Who do you think you are? The next second, a group of zombies swarmed towards this idiot, instantly knocking him down. But no one stepped forward to rescue him. Don't be afraid, in the narrow corridor, maintaining a certain distance won't be a problem. Soon, the zombies were cleared out. Pio Zengwo looked at the idiot who had just been bitten. This is what happens when you don't follow orders. I hope you won't be an idiot in your next life. This person has already been bitten by zombies. Even if he doesn't die, he'll turn in three minutes. C-team leader Pio Zengwo cleared the target site. All slashers accumulated valuable experience. Ordinary zombies wouldn't cause them much trouble, unless a mutant appeared. A zombie knocked down a slasher. At the critical moment, it was intercepted by a huge black shadow with a body slam. The zombie was pressed down by the bear-like black shadow. Brass knuckles flashing with the Jehovah's Holiness Church logo fell on the zombie's head like a thunderstorm. That slasher who narrowly escaped death was shocked. Cap. Captain Quib eyed. His fierce look disappeared, and he asked with a gentle face, Brother, you weren't bitten, were you? Thanks to you, I'm fine. I think this was the last one. Let's go outside and get some fresh air. D-team leader Quib eyed, cleared the target site. In the control room, Renziguang asked Zangsili, Have all teams come out? The first is my team and Mengshegan's team. The second is Jinze. The third are An Shanlin and Pio Zingwo. The fourth is Quibide. There are still teams carrying out clearance. Looks like things are going smoothly. Renziguang also had to go execute the secret mission assigned by his superiors. That is to clear out the worms in the army. Those who entered the army to guild themselves using the power in the hands of the high-level officials. They are often those with serious crimes, and also a group of incompetents. The map given to them was fake. They have no ability to get out of the maze-like site on their own. Major, wait a moment, you don't actually need to dirty your own hands. I or Muscle Pig can do it for you. No, clearing out trash should naturally be done by the person in charge of the operation. The one facing the anger of those who abuse power should also be me. What you need to be responsible for are just those slashers who have just come out. Don't come back too late. In one side, soldiers were wondering if there was a problem with this map. They had been going around in circles here for several rounds to atone for their crimes, not to embarrass their guide. They were determined to complete this mission at all costs. Suddenly there was a sound from the front. The soldiers were on high alert. But a moment later it became so quiet you could hear a pin drop. Under the squad leader's flashlight, they found that the newcomer was actually Major Renziguang. Everyone's tense hearts immediately relaxed. Just as the squad leader was about to report the situation, the next second, the soldiers unbelievably saw the Major raise his gun and aim at them. Major, what are you doing? The machine gun roared mercilessly. This group of deeply sinful people were like lambs waiting to be slaughtered. There were no zombies tearing here, but it became a hell of gunfire. Not long after, Renziguang slowly disappeared into the darkness. At the next sight, an abrupt sound appeared in the quiet corridor. Shit, it's a grenade. But the grenade didn't detonate. Just as the soldiers were stunned, death appeared like lightning. You are not real soldiers, so there's no need to pay respects for your sacrifices. You can go to heaven along with this corrupt country. The man was loyal to the country all his life. But the appearance of those who abuse power changed everything. Who could have imagined that the man would? At this time, in another site, a batch of soldiers wearing different uniforms were advancing in search formation. The squad leader in the center noticed something was wrong. The map was constantly guiding them deeper into the site, not towards the exit, and the only communication device they had hoped for also had no response. To be precise, only the communication facilities of those dogs sent here to monitor Renziguang were cut off. Just before setting out, a batch of people from different factions were sent to this operation. Their main task was to monitor and control the military operation commander and find a suitable time to directly eliminate him. The insertion of this group of people was done completely without going through normal procedures. Some soldiers didn't even know why this was happening. They could only guess it was because Major Ren had killed his former superior. He was an extreme anomaly. Only radical slasher teams would recruit such a person. We can't predict what they might do. But the squad leader had a different view. 
He had approached the Major before as an inspector. He felt Major Ren was a good commander. Major Ren took care of every team member. The captain believed a beloved leader couldn't be bad. The Major General replied grimly, He's just a sharp blade, a blade no one can control. As soldiers, we must obey headquarters orders. Understood? Rank has its privileges. The captain had no choice but to agree. He felt the Major must know about this. Otherwise, their illogical situation couldn't be explained. However, he still didn't believe the Major would kill him. Unless he wanted to eliminate surveillance. Seeing the two men behind him gave the captain some comfort. They were former B-class slashers unofficially hired by the Defense Department. The Quan brothers, Quan Rin and Quan Shan. The soldiers were all top-rated in military or special operations. If the Major wanted to kill them, these men could fight back. But Ren Zigwang had thought of this too. The captain shone his flashlight towards the sound. The light reflected off the scope of an SVK sniper rifle. This was why they were left for last. Danger. Everyone be alert. Several bullets whistled through silencers. The captain yelled for Quanrin. A skull-patterned riot shield slammed to the ground. This group's tactical skills were exceptional. Shield in front, everyone took positions and started firing. Behind the shield was a prepared counterattack. Ren Zigwang's eyes narrowed as he dodged incoming bullets. Dense bullets shredded the sniper machine gun on the spot. The whole team advanced in defensive formation. Quanrin held the shield in front. Regular soldiers followed with guns. They reacted quickly and calmly. This team was nothing like the previous trash. As a top soldier and A-class slasher, Quan Shan, take him out or everyone here dies. Ren Zigwang belonged to no faction. To some, this might be his original sin. The shield blocked grenade fragments, but not smoke. Visibility dropped to zero for those in the center. Rationally speaking, in the apocalypse, the interim government should pursue a common goal. The problem lies in the word, correct? Everyone stood back to back in a circle, waiting for the smoke to clear. When everyone thinks they're right, serious conflicts arise. Slashers are human too. They die when shot. A shadow in the smoke suddenly turned. Gunshots rang out at close range. Eliminating other noise might be the only way to ensure resonance. Damn it, you bastard. Different uniforms represent different stances. Ren Zigwang, do you still deserve to be called a soldier? Yes, slashers are human after all. It seems my superior was right. Ren Zigwang, you're the type who takes lives without meaning. Murdering your superior was just the start of your demonization. The captain shouted at the top of his lungs. Once, Ren Zigwang wanted justice for his fallen comrades, but he only received endless humiliation. He swore at his comrade's memorial. To hell with fighting for honor. He didn't know if it was right or wrong. He just wanted to follow his heart. Time will judge right and wrong. Ren Zigwang spoke into the radio. Cleanup complete. Send a telegram to Fushan. Zhang Sili replied. What's the content? Weijin nuclear power plant about to explode. I, Major Ren Zigwang, have taken control here. His superior's betrayal, Zhangde's arrogance, made him lose faith in the corrupt country. Thus, H country's smallest mutiny began in Weijin. As one of the strongest A-class slashers, he saw that his strength alone couldn't change anything. So he started H country's smallest mutiny, hoping to put the corrupt country back on track. H country's interim government, a soldier burst in. It's bad. Major Run has mutinied. At this moment, Ren Zigwang walked out of the station. The remaining soldiers showed him the highest respect. These were people who shared Ren Zigwang's beliefs. He took a deep breath. Next was to announce terms for negotiation with the interim government. H country's corruption forced him to this point. This decision was undoubtedly heavy. Major, we can start now. The camera recorded his solitary figure. I am Major Ren Zigwang, member of H country's interim government defense department. I can no longer tolerate this country's decay. Now I sit here. Originally, the interim government and I could have opened the door to a better country. Because we held the key. By mobilizing the army and uniting slashers across the country, we could have achieved a common goal. Rebuilding a nation in the apocalypse. Fairly distributing limited resources. People no longer starving or freezing. But all this was an illusion. All military forces were allocated to protect the vested interests. Already limited resources became even scarcer. The rich feast while the poor freeze to death. It's disgusting and heartbreaking. And as a soldier, I'm forced to protect this garbage. It's laughable. Weijin nuclear power plant is now under my control. All engineers and workers are hostages. I'm not doing this to kill everyone. To satisfy my demands. Before this society gets back on track, I won't leave the power plant. If you ignore my demands, then prepare to see a mushroom cloud. Finally, Ren Zigwang staggered to the camera as if all strength had left him. He saluted the country and people he was loyal to. All involved soldiers spontaneously saluted together. The whole power plant echoed with, Long live the motherland. At this time, Jinzeza still didn't know what had happened. He just thought they were done here and could go back. The soldiers seemed to be gathering. 
Are they celebrating our lucky survival? In the Defense Department, a four-star general cursed angrily. This mad dog has finally started biting. He's worse than zombies. Major General Chui, who arranged this operation, didn't expect so many couldn't control him. The general, veins popping. I'll deal with your punishment later. Right now, we need to deal with this time bomb. But the advisor said there weren't enough troops. Many were sent to repair the power plant earlier. Right now, not only can we not deal with Major Ren, but we're also struggling to maintain the safety of Fushan. Sending a small force might be wiped out by the Major. Most worrying is, we don't know how many in the Defense Department share the Major's views. His speech was highly provocative. The general threw an ashtray at the advisor. He had lost the dignity of a general. Arrest them. Arrest them all. In this atmosphere, everyone had to shout, Yes, sir. The general hated Renziguang. It was his first time receiving such a threat. But he couldn't ignore Renziguang's demands now. Perhaps pretending to comply would be the best choice. The general then wanted to know Renziguang's demands. Scene change. A group of soldiers were arresting Zangdes. Zangdes shouted angrily, Do you know who's behind me? Do you know the consequences of this? The captain, holding handcuffs, said, I know who's behind you, but please cooperate now. Zangdes didn't believe him and kept resisting. The next second, a gun was pressed against his jaw. Do you know all of Fushan might be destroyed because of you? I've been very polite to you. If you don't cooperate, I'll shoot you dead. Finally, Zangdes obediently put on the handcuffs. But he didn't understand what the captain meant about Fushan being destroyed. In a car nearby, someone was reporting on the radio. Zangdes has been arrested. All of the major's demands have been met. In the power plant, Jinzezu was chatting with his teammates. Suddenly, Songzuian emerged from the bushes, relaying that the major wanted to see him. Songzuian said there was a serious problem to deal with, telling Jinzezu to prepare himself. Jinzezu was confused. What serious problem could there be? That he and other slashers were under control. Quibide was puzzled. Do you know what you just said? I'll say it again. If you want to live, cooperate with me. Let's change this country together. Renziguang launched a mutiny because the country was about to fall into anarchy. And the Defense Department's measure was to hire A-class slashers to eliminate him. The controlled slashers seriously doubted their ears. You mean, a mutiny? Renziguang said to cooperate if they wanted to live. Also, to persuade their teammates, we'll all change this country together. And Shanlin suddenly lowered her hands, because she understands her worth to the major. It's not about sycophantic submission. He needed them to persuade civilian slashers. So if they didn't go too far, the soldiers wouldn't shoot. Renziguang nodded approvingly. This kid understands the situation well. He said he wouldn't eliminate them now, but if they didn't cooperate, that might change. The next second, and Shanlin slapped him. Everyone was shocked. Was this brave or reckless? And Shanlin demanded an answer from Renziguang. If the mutiny fails, will you blow up the power plant? We civilian slashers were hired to clear zombies, not to die for you. A soldier raised his gun at her. This mission was dangerous from the start. The current situation isn't much different. And Shanlin shouted angrily. Has any slasher ever complained to you out of fear? No, right? Do you know why? Because this is our job. This is what we're hired for. So even if you use our vehicles as shields on the outer perimeter, disregarding our stamina, forcing us to fight nonstop, we'll execute any zombie-related orders without complaint. But this mutiny has nothing to do with her. Her family still lives in Fushan. A mutiny means opposing the interim government managing Fushan. Have you thought about our families? Hearing this, Renziguang's attitude softened. He said it's indeed difficult to make decisions that affect your families so quickly. But the country will become a plaything of a few power brokers and their lackeys. People can only survive by flattering and pleasing. The world will become a place of despair. And Shanlin thought this was nonsense. Renziguang calmly said, Zangsali. Zangsali was startled. He felt that although they were promoting revolution, revealing military secrets to civilians wasn't good. Renziguang took the notebook and pondered for a moment. He still handed it to An Shanlin. And Shanlin had no idea what it was. But Pio Zenguo behind her knew. It contained crucial secrets of the interim government, though it couldn't directly explain anything. Analyzing and connecting it with recent events would lead to conclusions. Pio Zenguo broke out in a cold sweat as he read. After a while, he fell silent. Jinzezu behind him asked urgently, Don't just read it yourselves, tell us what's going on. Quibide chose his words carefully and said, He's saying our country's power is declining at an alarming rate. The country has survived on resources accumulated during peacetime. But the report says even outside resources can't be found now. Pio Zenguo continued, for ordinary people long lacking resources, there's not much difference. But the problem is, in the past we only lacked resources, not completely without them. Because reserved resources were circulating in the market, we could still scavenge. If even these resources are gone, it will cause public outrage. The poor and powerless have feelings too. 
Ren Zigwang also said if it were just this. As soldiers, no, perhaps we could still endure it. But the problems don't stop there. Pio Zengwo knew what Ren Zigwang wanted to express. There's also the issue of military supplies rapidly decreasing. Statistics show that soon. Even military supplies won't meet minimum requirements. Jinzezu didn't understand what minimum requirements meant. It means unable to maintain the integrity of domestic territory. In other words, below the minimum, the country exists in name only. And according to this data, we're only one month away from this point. So Ren Zigwang didn't do this on a whim, or because he was in a bad mood. Well, now you know the truth. Will you join? The four still considering circled around. Pio Zengwo said to agree for now. If we refuse now, we'll definitely be shot. Plus, after reading the report, he understood Ren Zigwang's feelings. And Shanlin said she didn't want to become a rebel. Quibide, I also think joining them is better. Living inside walls, we never imagined the world had become like this. When everyone looked at Jinzez, who could have guessed his understanding was a bit different. He thought Ren Zigwang persuading them was just to avoid internal opposition. If we agree to this, we won't become rebels or get shot, right? Pio Zengwo suddenly realized, you're a damn genius. H Country Interim Defense Department Underground Interrogation Room. The police captain brought water to see Zangdes because superiors ordered his release. His attitude is completely different from when he had a gun pointed at his jaw before. Zangdes smiled knowingly. I'll put in a good word for you. Won't have you eliminated. But as punishment, I'll transfer you to a quieter position. The captain didn't respond to his words. The higher-ups say there's a condition for your release. Go to Weijin and eliminate Renzigwe. Zangdes stated, to accomplish this, he needs another person sent. An A-class slasher to go with him. He knew how terrifying Renzigwang was. Not only with military and slasher experience, but also modern weapons. He's willing to pay half to hire a slasher. But the defense department must issue the commission. Money is the only way a small-time crook can beat a soldier. At Chui Zhang Law Firm, Kuye Jiang received a commission from the defense department. She didn't know why they were hiring slashers again, or why the target location was Weijin. Wasn't Shovel already there? The smell of conspiracy grew stronger. To be safe. The Defense Department hired two A-class slashers from Chui Zhang at once, codenamed Fisherman Jin Zizin and female boss Liz Wurong. If you can't solve the problem, eliminate the one who raised it. Ren Zigwang wanted to use threats to get the country back on track. But when it came to their own interests, the Defense Department completely ignored the threat to detonate the nuclear plant. They deployed A-class slashers and special forces, determined to make the situation irreversible. At this time, Ren Zigwang was deploying defenses. He knew how dangerous this step was. The Defense Department would surely do something to salvage the situation. Just then, Major, let's talk. Ten minutes earlier, Jin Zezu was confused. He was pushed out by everyone to negotiate with Ren Zigwang. But he knew Pio Zengwo was ten times smarter than him. And in eloquence, he was far behind Quibide. This was because Jin Zezu hadn't realized that Ren Zigwang looked at him differently from others. According to Pio Zengwo's analysis, Jin Zezu did have an indescribable personal charm. And the major was attracted by this charm, feeling a sense of identification. Jin Zezu was confused. Really? Look at your team members. You're someone who inexplicably inspires trust. And Shanlin, stop mumbling. Weren't you quite articulate when scolding me? So Jin Zezu's seemingly simple and somewhat foolish proposal, after Pio Zengwo's modification, was conveyed to Ren Zigwang. It contained three points. First, slashers are not Ren Zigwang's subordinates and can't be viewed as soldiers. Second, under any circumstances, Slashers are neutral and don't belong to any specific profit-seeking organization. Third, after everything is resolved, soldiers must escort slashers back to Fushan and protect them from zombie attacks. The slashers' meaning was clear. No matter how capable they are, they're still ordinary civilians. Although they could understand Renziguang's uprising, they didn't want to get involved. This was also the attitude Renziguang hoped to see. He only regretted not being able to fight alongside Jin Zezu in rebuilding the country. He also said he'd try his best not to involve them in the war with the interim government. Before leaving, Ren Zigwang stated, Slashers still need to be on guard duty at night. Dealing with zombies is your job? Jin Zezu frowned. It's just treating us like free labor. But anyway, this matter was resolved satisfactorily. The Slashers declared their neutral stance. Meanwhile, the rebellious soldiers began preparing for a long battle. First, they needed to prevent accidental explosions during the revolution. So the hostage workers had to perform minimal maintenance on the nuclear plant. Second, for safety, soldiers placed explosives at various positions. They built defensive positions in open areas and efficiently deployed personnel. This was the world's first revolution conducted in a defensive, rather than offensive, or breakthrough form. Ren Zigwang showed no mercy to the military's maintenance personnel. Those who didn't participate had only one fate, death. 
Before relaying orders, Zheng Sili asked the Major. Major, do you think they'll really ignore the warning about detonating the nuclear plant and send troops to attack here? Are you scared? I've never seen you flinch facing massive hordes of zombies, but you're afraid to fight humans? Zhang Sili fell silent. Killing zombies is universally seen as just, but this is fighting government troops. Don't fear, those guys are like living zombies. Even if we threaten with the nuclear plant, they'll definitely come. Because as I said, they're just living zombies. They've lost their reason. Soldiers were assembling at Fushan Air Force Base. Zhangdez complained in the distance. This damn weather, it's like it's trying to foreshadow something. The liaison officer said, The Ministry of Defense only decided on the operation because of the rainy weather. The enemy has no radar. A surprise attack now has better odds. Have the other slashers arrived? Zhangdez asked nervously. He had no idea who his slasher companion would be. Punk, it's you, Old Jean said. Clearly, Old Jean didn't know who he'd be working with either before setting out. Zhangdez wasn't angry upon hearing this, but smiled happily. With Old Jean here, taking those soldiers' heads will be a piece of cake. Just then, a voice came from behind them. Hello, I'm Lieutenant Colonel Zaya Changxing, in charge of this operation. The situation is urgent, so I'll explain the battle plan directly. This is a surprise attack. Combat personnel will take transport planes to Weijin. We expect to reach Weijin airspace at 3 a.m. Special forces will land first, tasked with suppressing the rebels with firepower. And the target for Slasher is to capture Renziguang, who holds the authority to detonate the nuclear power plant. Zaya Changxing stated, Although we say capture, elimination is also acceptable. He'd be executed if brought back anyway. Old Jean only wanted to know how the Defense Department planned to handle the civilian Slashers. Zaya Changxing said if they cooperate, the country naturally won't hold them accountable. But if they side with Renziguang, they'll be charged with treason too. Zaya Changxing knew Old Jean was worried about slashers from the same company or acquaintances. So he reminded him again to eliminate Renziguang quickly. Lead those slashers to prevent them from losing their lives. Hours later, as the cabin signal light came on, it signaled the start of Soldier vs. Soldier, A-Class Slasher vs. A-Class Slasher. The Defense Department-led operation to retake Weijin officially began. The well-prepared Renziguang had keen hearing. Launch flares. Flares rose like meteors. In the light were the horrified faces of special forces paratroopers. Because anti-aircraft guns and armed rebel soldiers were aiming at them. Renziguang spoke. Tonight's supper, let's have a honeycomb pizza. Fire. The blood-red night sky seemed sewn with dense golden threads. A man just wanted to go back to sleep, but was shot. Because of the Defense Department's faint attack plan, the route was blocked by these civilians. To avoid detection by rebels, soldiers decided to kill them all. This is war. Special forces were sitting ducks in midair. Some soldiers opened their parachutes, but the chutes were pierced by dense gunfire. Waiting for them was only being smashed to pieces. Some soldiers started to fight back, but their accuracy was low while descending. More soldiers panicked. This was a slaughterhouse, but they were the ones being slaughtered. This was because from the start of the operation, people inside the interim government had tipped off Renziguang. These people just lacked the courage to join the action. They were all waiting for someone to change this corrupt country. Each of them had made some effort for this cause. They would spare no effort wherever help was needed. Then one one piece of intelligence after another leaked from within the Defense Department. Renziguang could see they had spirit. He ordered, Gather all soldiers with live fire experience. Rain mixed with blood fell, like heaven's teardrops of blood. Renziguang commanded, From now on, conserve ammunition in battle, and report the number of fallen bodies to me in real time. In the distance, shadows flashed as soldiers emerged from bushes. Lieutenant Colonel, as you said, they're focused on the paratroopers. They haven't discovered our encirclement yet. Good, after all. We made such a big sacrifice. But the soldier wondered how the lieutenant colonel knew the plan had leaked. When deploying the faint attack plan, he crippled officers who disagreed with him, and those with connections to Renziguang. Under repeated inhuman torture, no one could resist confessing. The next second, Zaya Changxing's eyes flashed coldly. Why do you ask? Are you one of their lackeys too? The soldier panicked, saying it was just a joke. Being too tense during operations leads to mistakes, Zaya Changxing said. The soldier said he wasn't nervous, but his face betrayed him. Let's start preparing. Contact our slashers. At this time, Old Jean and Zangdez had landed safely. Zangdez said, This Renziguang not only got me jailed, now he's forced me to parachute. Old man, aren't you angry? Unexpectedly, Old Jean said, I think you're the one who provoked him, punk. Zangdez thought, Damn, this old guy shouldn't know the inside story. In Old Jin's eyes, Renziguang's success or failure, in Zangdez's life or death didn't matter to him. A slasher is someone who kills zombies, and that's what he is. This left Zangdez confused. Then why are you here? Isn't it for money too? 
Old Jean said he wasn't just here for money, he also feared a child might be implicated. I'm not like you, who'd sell out colleagues, parents, and brothers for money. Even the talent business is in your calculations. These words made Zangdez extremely unhappy. He thought about killing the old man and that soldier right here. Meanwhile, Zangdez also received operation instructions. On the other side, Jin Zezu, awakened by gunfire, walked out of his tent slowly. Seeing everyone gathered, he asked, What's that? What's going on? What else could it be? The war has started, and Shanlin answered him. The continuous gunfire and sky-high flames confirmed her words. Pio Zenguo said, Major Run has the advantage now. That's good. At least we're safe. Quibide was also glad Jin Zezu had negotiated to place the slasher camp farther away. Jin Zezu said, So we just need to stay put, right? And Shanlin said, That's right. Don't meddle like you did with me before. War isn't like fighting zombies with a shovel. Being lectured by An Shanlin, Jin Zezu was displeased. When have I ever meddled? Piro Zenguo relayed orders. Tell other slashers to stay put if they don't want to get shot. Jin Zezu, who just wanted to go back to sleep, didn't see the flash in the distant bushes. Captain, those look like slashers. Are they also associated with Rinzigwang? The captain was conflicted. After all, these slashers were ordinary civilians. But if they've been persuaded by Major Rin and attack us from behind when our forces take a detour, then forget about any achievements. We'll become the first troops in history to be taken down by ordinary civilians. So we need to eliminate all potential threats. This is war. Besides, if problems arise, Lieutenant Colonel Zhao should find a way to help us. The trigger creaked under hesitant fingers, but finally spat out cruel flames. And Shanlin asked urgently, Uncle, did you hear gunshots just now? They sounded close. Her heart suddenly skipped a beat. Because Jin Zezu was motionless. Indeed, the soldier had shot him. And Shanlin's heart skipped again. Jin Zezu said in confusion, Didn't you say we wouldn't get shot if we didn't meddle? Damn it. Dizziness followed. Other slashers who reacted slowly also came to check. Suddenly Pio Zenguo stopped everyone, shouting, Look over there! Soldiers with raised machine guns were aiming at them, followed by the death-like roar of machine guns. H Country's Defense Department soldiers were killing all civilians in their way. But the next second, they turned into zombies. Because these people weren't just ordinary civilians. They were professional zombie hunting slashers. Their weapons still had zombie blood virus on them. The slashers never imagined the war would spread to them. Many fell into pools of blood before they could react. And Shanlin's shoulder was also hit. Opening fire right away indicates that the attackers are soldiers from the Ministry of Defense. But gunfire in the distance never stopped. Could it be to deal with us slashers first? The Defense Department divided their forces into two groups. Two slashers from Anne Shanlin's team felt they couldn't just sit and wait for death after struggling so long. The soldier captain waved his hand. The line of fire immediately turned towards the two. Clearly, the Defense Department wasn't planning to communicate. They wanted to kill everyone here. One of them didn't die immediately. Before dying, he whimpered to Anne Shanlin, Save me, Captain. His eyes were full of endless sorrow and unwillingness. This scene deeply affected Anne Shanlin. I'll kill you all. The next second she was grabbed by a large hand. It was Jin Zezu. He thought it wasn't the right time. You still want to remain neutral? Watching comrades fall one by one. We should still do nothing? Seeing Anne Shanlin didn't understand his meaning. He tightened his grip, pulling her closer. I'm not telling you to play dead until they leave. You're right. To survive, we must fight. But Jin Zezu believed the slashers wouldn't all be killed at once. He trusted these people who had fought together in hellish situations would surely create a chance for counterattack. So don't be impulsive. Just lie down for a while. Sure enough, Piro Zenguo was observing from a corner. Zuowan asked what to do now. Should we hide here and let these beasts leave? Piro Zenguo thought this surprise attack was meticulously planned. This means they'll definitely search the camp. So just hiding would mean waiting for death. The man with the hat, holding a zombie blood-stained axe, said panically, The enemy has firearms. How can we fight with these zombie-killing weapons? This caught Pio Zengua's attention. The weapons for dealing with zombies. A sinister smile appeared on his face. We're slashers who catch zombies. We should use this to deal with them. The current situation is kill or be killed. Look, there's zombie blood on this. Everyone was shocked. You want to use this against them? You say it simply, but can they really get close so easily? Pio Zenguo knew the soldiers wouldn't come willingly, but some people don't need to get close. That would be Zuowan's air gun. Pio Zenguo instructed him, just infect one person, that's enough. When one turns zombie, the whole group will panic. The virus will spread, creating opportunities for us. Then we'll eliminate them all. Zuowan worried a miss would expose everyone. We'd all die then. Can you promise not to blame me? Pio Zenguo's smile was meaningful. We'll curse you before dying at most. Afraid of that? As Jin Zezu expected, humans have their own thoughts. Slashers are unique, having faced countless ordeals. Even without two leaders, facing strong enemies, they'd still choose to fight. The capped man scraped zombie blood from his axe. Piro Zenguo cut his palm, bonding the virus with blood. Each crisis taught them a lesson. 
Never give up in any situation. Always find ways to survive. They, they can't ignore bulletproof vest or defensive tools. There's only one chance. Wait until sure to penetrate the military uniforms before shooting. Shoot when soldiers are distracted. Pio Zengwo does not believe that all the slashers outside are dead. They are going to supply weapons to the remaining slashers hiding. Is everyone ready? All silent, but eyes showed readiness. Then, two soldiers found their hideout. A dark gun barrel slowly pointed at them. Holy crap, what's that? The air gun sound attracted more soldiers. Soldiers hit by virus-laden screws turned into zombies. Zombie soldiers frantically bit their comrades. Now, everyone attack. Soldiers facing mutated zombies up close have thrown the defense forces into chaos. A shovel fell before Jinzeth. A member joked, saw you alive from afar. Stop pretending. Get up, kill these beasts. Jinzezu told Anshanlin. I said they'd create chances, let's move. Anshanlin worried about his condition. He hadn't stopped bleeding since being shot. No defeatism, we'll kill them even if we die. A soldier yelled, you traitors, showing he forgot who attacked first. Next second, a flash. The soldier's head flew off. Quibide, codename Manbear, was also pent up. Defense department soldiers fighting zombies in front of them one moment. Might be struck down from behind by an axe the next. As their captain shouted, you are branded as national traitors. This survival crisis ended. They wanted neutrality, but it didn't work. They need to find Renziguang. Explain the situation. If possible, provide them with additional support. Officials forced civilians to rebel. These civilians now only wanted to survive. They were H country's elite force. Also protecting Fushan from zombies. But today, H country sent them all to Weijin nuclear plant. Disregarding Fushan citizens' survival, Renziguang marked cleared locations on the map. With prior intel, they accurately predicted locations and times. Annihilating enemy paratroopers with almost no casualties. But as a veteran, Renziguang felt uneasy. The smoothness made him uncomfortable. The communication soldier reported. The number of airborne troops casualties has been confirmed. 82 total, excluding missing and shot down transport crew. Renziguang felt more uneasy. To deal with an experienced officer, who is also an A-class slasher with over 100,000 zombie kills, the defense department only sent 100 men to capture him. He thinks that, no matter how incompetent the Ministry of Defense is, they wouldn't be this foolish. The communications soldier also felt the number was odd. But when confirming the dead's identities, after he saw some of the elite airborne troops, known as the best of the best, he thought Fushan's forces were stretched, hard to send more. These elites would be a threat if they landed. In conclusion, they're unlikely to use tricks we don't know, or split forces for diversion. Renziguang knew. Objectively, the communications soldier was right. But deep down inside him, why is it that even though they've won, he can't feel happy? Renziguang's intuition was correct. Because in this mutiny, admin and defense used nearly five times available forces. They sent 500 top elites. Outer sentries were eliminated one by one. Sue. Sudden attack. Danger approached silently. Defense Department sniper team Eagle Eye. Stop sniping. Stand by. The speaker was Eagle Eye's deputy, Colonel Ming Zonghang. The base in front of him doesn't seem like it was built in a hurry. Outpost and tent layout was textbook perfect. But even the best textbook has flaws, as he's also a military expert. With this layout, he could find the weak points and deliver a fatal blow to the enemy even with his eyes closed. 32 degrees left, 17 up, mind the southeast wind. Two more sentries fell. Eagle Eye here. Outer sentries cleared. Mission complete. Transferring control. Good work. Control transfer confirmed. The bald man ordered. Enemy unaware of our attack. Avoid gunfire. Prevent large-scale attention. Close combat. All prepare for battle. Defense Department Assault Team. Mad Bull, move out. The speaker was Mad Bull's deputy, Colonel Zajinkson. At his command, Mad Bull in front, Eagle Eye behind, quickly formed an echelon attack formation. The nuclear plant gate was nothing to Mad Bull. Ren's subordinates turned at the sound. It was clearly too late to discover now. In enemy attack. The previous communications soldier was shocked. Did these troops flank us? Everyone arm up. The enemy's attacking. Ordinary soldiers were quickly defeated by Mad Bull. Many only fired once before falling in blood. The communications soldier used his last strength. Report. North side attacked by admin's flanking force, requesting support. Next second, Zajinxin appeared behind him. This means the North defense forces annihilated. Meanwhile, bad news flooded the central command. Southeast, west, northwest. They all encountered the enemy without any warning from the sentries. Renziguang gritted his teeth. These madmen sent all Fushan's elites. Otherwise, 
They couldn't have breached the defenses so quickly from multiple directions. What if zombies attack Fushan now? Or if there's civil unrest? Don't they consider these issues? To avoid the nuclear plant threat, the interim government sent all forces. The national leadership's stupidity far exceeds our imagination. I was just bluffing. Yet they disregard citizens' lives. He then gave orders via radio. We're facing all of Fushan's forces. Outer personnel by time. Contract defensive formation. Central personnel prepare for positional warfare. You're fighting the pawns of national parasites. They'll oppress us and our families. But this is their main force. If we can defend successfully, our revolution won't stop at Weijin. We'll attack Fushan where our families are. This is a chance to change the country. Use all means. Don't let anyone escape. Everyone, hold on with all your might. Ren Zigwang drew his dagger and gun. Today he'd fight alongside everyone. As a soldier of this era, as H country's only A-class slasher, he must stand at the most dangerous spot. The south was the quickest to fall. So Ren Zigwang's target was the southern position. Then, a fishhook slithered like a viper. Anxious, Ren Zigwang was hooked and fell. He quickly looked at the attacker. It was A-class slasher, codename Fisherman, Jinshizen. Close behind was A-class slasher, codename Big Brother, Zangdez. Zangdez's iron fist came crashing down. He wanted revenge for being imprisoned. The man was just a pure soldier, about to lose due to a strategic misstep. Then, civilian slasher's appearance gave him hope. All plans went smoothly. Defense used paratroopers as bait, distracting Renzigwang, then launched a full attack on weak points. Most importantly, they knew Run wouldn't abandon dying subordinates. Zaya Changxing was satisfied with his plan. Those who can't control emotions can't achieve great things. Next, just wait for A-class slashers to kill him, and it's over. In terms of results, Ren Zigwang's decision was wrong. As the leader of the Revolutionary Army, he knew that the enemy had a faint strategy in place, yet he still went alone to the southern front, which was falling the fastest, resulting in an ambush by two A-class slashers, putting him in danger. Major Ren, didn't you expect our next meeting to be like this? You didn't think I was still in jail, did you? In this chess game called Revolution, he gave the opponent a chance to checkmate. Don't lie there, get up. Didn't you say I was a thug, always targeting me? The radio first transmitted urgent calls for help, then changed to Major. It's an honor to fight alongside you. I'm honored. Please change this country. It eventually turned into a crackling, interrupted noise. After all, Ren Zigwang was a soldier, a frontline fighter. As they say, kindness doesn't command troops. His solution was to eliminate the two obstacles before him. Only then could he save everyone. He immediately aimed his gun at Zangdes, because this thug was the state's chief pawn. But the bullets were stopped by his hard reinforced gauntlets. A class slashers indeed can't be underestimated. Zangdez instinctively raised his hand. He was already drenched in cold sweat. Just as Renzigwang aimed to fire again, a fishing line appeared silently. He was instantly hooked and stumbled. Off balance, Renzigwang still fired. But like before, old Jean pulled hard, sending Ren flying. Zangdez complained. Old man, couldn't you have acted sooner? I almost became a sieve. Old Jean calmly said. That wouldn't be bad. He thought Major Ren, though a traitor, was much better than Zangdes. The fishhook kept pulling, making Ren Zigwang crash into trees like a kite. Stop struggling. Being captured is better than death. I'm here to save Shovel, not to kill you. In a daze, Ren Zigwang flashed back to the past. Comrades falling before him one by one. He recalled the helpless question. Lieutenant, why are you so late? Watching comrades die was his emotional barrier. He silently told himself, this time I can't be late again. The blade flashed, instantly cutting the fishing line. Old Jean was shocked, wondering what belief supported him. He immediately called Zangdez to help stall for time. He needed to reattach the hook to the line. Zangdez showed disdain. Don't underestimate him, punk. He's Major Ren. Besides, he still has a gun. Zangdez was even more contemptuous. He just fired so many shots. There can't be many bullets left. Old oh man, why are you so chicken? At this moment, Ren Zigwang was severely injured. He slowly stood up, leaning on a tree trunk. Indeed, as Zangdez guessed, not many bullets left in the gun. He searched his belt. It's the only option now. Suddenly, a rustling sound. He raised his gun towards the shadows. Don't shoot, we're allies. It was Jin Zez. And Shanlin also wondered why Uncle Soldier looked like this. Ren Zigwang was stunned, then smiled. Seems like there's still hope. These civilian slashers had clearly been in a big fight. Pio Zengwo briefly described what happened earlier. The Defense Army massacred them without explanation. To survive, they had no choice but to fight back. Ren Zigwang laughed happily after hearing this. I told you to join me earlier. Jin Zezu scoffed. Stop patting yourself on the back. Tell us how everyone can survive. 
Renziguang stood up unsteadily. It's critical, but not too late yet. At this moment, he seemed to have made a decision. The man just smiled slightly. Yet it invigorates the entire legion. Because in countless battles, the man exemplified what it means to die for someone who truly understands you. Chaotic footsteps approach Renziguang's central position. Suddenly a mirror pops up from behind sandbags, reflecting enemy silhouettes. They are the last line of defense. If they die, the revolutionary flame will be extinguished. At this moment, everyone stands up and turns around. Streaks of fire light up the pitch-black night sky. National defense soldiers fall amid the gunfire roar. But the soldiers aren't happy. This is already who knows how many to charge. If this continues, they'll run out of ammo. A soldier wants to know if the Major has given any other instructions. The captain knows the Major should be in a more dangerous place. They just need to hold their positions. The Major will come save them, like before. In battle after battle, Renziguang built trust with his soldiers. This is something that high-ranking officers will never understand. Dying for someone who truly understands you. Moreover, they're still alive. B-Class Slasher, codename Ice C, Mengshagen. He appears on the battlefield wearing heavy armor. Bullets are useless against this armor. He lifts two soldiers like chickens, smashing their heads together. The national defense, Captain grits his teeth. Now they can only keep firing. However, the bullets hit the captured soldiers. Soon, only the captain is left collapsed on the ground. A sniper scope in the distance aims at Mengshagen. It's an enemy sniper, but the gunshot comes from elsewhere. This sniper dies just like that. B-Class Slasher, codename Full Blast, Zangsali. He reports enemy snipers eliminated. Everyone can act freely. B-Class Slasher with natural camouflage, codename Prairie, Songzwian, leads soldiers to clean up the battlefield. But he can't speak, so he passes the radio to a nearby officer. The officer shouts with all his might into the radio that they've cut off enemy supplies. The enemy can't resupply ammo. The tide has turned, urging the whole army to press forward. The captain smiles with relief. He knew it would be like this. The slashers will create opportunities for them. Time for full counterattack. In the distance, a national defense captain is observing the whole battlefield. He thought creating a moment when Renziguang wasn't present would avoid a fierce battle. This is a deep sense of helplessness. Before he finishes speaking, a large hand grips his jaw. It's Zaya Changsheng. Captain, watch your mouth, lest you demoralize the troops. He believes this plan has no flaws. It's just that each piece has variations in performance. But it doesn't affect the outcome, as long as the slashers succeed. When the rebels see Renziguang's head, the wheel of fate still won't deviate. He wants to contact the slashers. Ask when they can bring back Renziguang's head. Meanwhile, the civilian slashers are curious. Who could beat Renziguang to this state? It's two A-class slashers sent by the defense department. Everyone is shocked. Even Major Ren can't handle them. How can they help? Renziguang smiles. Ordinary slashers indeed have no chance. But he feels they can try. Pio Zengwo still has concerns. They've never fought slashers before. Let alone A-class ones far beyond them. He asks, do you have a good idea? Renziguang's answer confuses him. Renziguang wants him to lead ordinary slashers to support the central defense forces. Pio Zengwo is perplexed. Shouldn't we use our numerical advantage to take down those two A-class first? Renziguang doesn't want to say. Even ten truckloads of these ordinary people are no match for those two. Insufficient strength would become a burden, and they've got the direction wrong. It's not enough to just take down two A-class enemies. Suppressing the defense forces is necessary to survive. Pio Zengwo ponders and realizes Renziguang is right. The plan starts. Only four people remain. Renziguang, Jinzezu, and Shanlin, and Quibide. Renziguang divides the four into two groups, each to deal with one A-class slasher. What in Shanlin cares about isn't who is on the team. It's whether or not she can split Renziguang in two. Dividing him in half is the only way to ensure survival. Jinzezu also gets excited. He wants to know who these two A-class are. It's not that big gorilla, is it? Renziguang is surprised by his intuition. One of them is indeed that punk. Jinzezu immediately says he'll handle this guy. A gentleman does not leave a grudge unavenged. Renziguang had planned it this way. After all, the other one would be more troublesome for Jinzezu. It couldn't be? That's right, it's him. Codename Fisherman, Jinzhizen. Jinzezu recalls the past. Renziguang has also heard they're close. So he and Quibide will handle old Jin. Subdue him first, then Jinzezu can persuade the old man. Jinzezu glared. I have no intention of going easy on that gorilla. Great, good luck to you all. Crows caw joyfully in the silent night sky. For them, war is a sumptuous feast. But for Jinzezu and Anshanlin, it's humanity's cry. Now, they finally find their target. Zangdez, codename Big Brother. 
Seeing him again, Jin Zezu inhales sharply at the immense pressure. And Shanlin teases, didn't you say you'd take him down? Why the cold feet? Who's got cold feet? I'll kick his ass right now. Meanwhile, Ren Zigwang also locks eyes with old Jin. He knows he's injured, so he uses Quibide as a shield. Old Jin's eyes flash coldly. You're still set on this path of no return. In this final battle deciding the country's fate, Slasher's enemies are no longer zombies, but each other. The 250-pound youth shocks the 500-pound man. Knowing he's outmatched in strength, the youth uses a monkey climbing tree technique. Now the two iron-headed fools charge at Zangdes. As for coordination, they haven't thought about it at all. Everything is improvised. In a flash, and Shanlin grips dual axes, attacking Zangdes' lower body. She knows she's small in size, but she makes up for it with agility. Conversely, Jinzezu has great strength and explosive power. Attacking the upper body head-on is the right move. As long as their attack ranges don't overlap, it's the best coordination for now. But Zangdez seems to see through it all. A grab with his right hand, a kick with his left leg, easily neutralizing both attacks. To him, these two are seriously underestimating A-class slashers. The shovel creaks in his grip. He says to Jinzezu, After being beaten like that, you still haven't learned your lesson? His left leg applies force, pinning the axe to the ground. This is the difference in strength. Jinzezu is shocked. He's much stronger physically and mentally than before. Why does he still feel so powerless? Is the strength gap really that hard to close? You monster. As he gets angry, and Shanlin shouts, Do you only rely on brute force in a fight? Has strength been your only improvement? At the cocktail party back then, B-class slasher Ann Shanlin was also present. She thinks Jinzezu has improved not just in strength, but experience, speed, and more. Jinzezu pauses. Right. Something must have changed. Combat ability includes many aspects. I can't let him lead me by the nose. Courage, strength, and skill. If I can't match his strength, I'll outdo him in other areas. Zangdez is startled. His opponent abandons the shovel, clinging to his right arm like a monkey. Damn, it's a joint lock. Now his right arm joint cracks loudly. With clear thinking, Jinzezu recalls techniques he's seen in street fights. Quick, do it like this. Let's take him down together. And Shanlin also abandons her axes. She knows she can't be as effective as Jinzezu this way, but can't think of any other option now. Zangdez swings his left fist desperately, but with his right arm entangled, his mobility is greatly reduced. A bizarre scene unfolds on the battlefield. Two koalas tightly hugging a tree branch. This big tree is Zangdez. He curses angrily, relying entirely on his own strength. Jinzezu now only wants to break this guy's arm. But as mentioned before, Zangdez is good at calculating. A class slasher battle experience tells him. He's only inferior to these two monkeys in one aspect, speed. In his view, meeting up with the old man is now most crucial. Taking out that soldier is the real task, so these two going all out isn't necessarily bad. A falling sensation comes. Zangdez slams Jinzezu on his arm into the ground. Iron knuckles plus a large man, at least 250 kilograms. He didn't expect such a huge strength difference. Zangdez's left hand does the same. And Shanlin's defense is clearly weaker than Jinzezu's. She's starting to struggle. Seeing this, Jinzezu urgently says, Hang on, or we'll both die. Then keep at it till I smash you both to pulp. In the night sky, a thin fishing line dances up and down. Rinzaguang shouts, Quick, dodge. The fish hook comes like ghostly fire. Rinzaguang barely dodges with a mid-air spin. A class instinct makes old Jean feel a chill. The next second, two bullets fire from Rinzaguang's gun. Though old Jean avoids vital spots, his clothes are grazed at the waist. Nearby Quibide is also terrified. This is too horrifying. Once towering trees are now in segments, with smooth cut surfaces, he can't even see the fishing line. He only knows a battle between A-class is beyond his involvement. He might die here if he's not careful. Now Rinzaguang gives an instruction he doesn't understand. Grab that fishing line. He sees old Jean dodging bullets by predicting the gun's direction. Against such a top A-class figure, they can't keep being controlled by him. They need to grab the fishing line and pull him over to subdue him. Quibide is confused upon hearing this. That thing can cut through trees. Grabbing it might split his body in half. Renziguang calmly says, Observe carefully, the line is only lethal at top speed. Your chance to grab it is when the line's speed slows for an instant. So focus and watch its trajectory. Put some sand on your hands to increase friction. Quibide falls silent. Honestly, can this really work? Renziguang answers firmly, We must do this or we'll both die at this old man's hands. You madman. Quibide reluctantly complies. I can't see the fishing line. He asks Renziguang to help find the right moment. Renziguang reloads, saying slowly, even if you die, you'll go to the heaven your priest talks about. What's there to fear? Only dying fighting zombies gets you to heaven. 
dying fighting someone like this gets you nothing. Ren Zigwang takes a deep drag on his cigar. That's really crappy then. At this moment, they can't see anything, but hear a buzzing sound. He's coming from his hiding place. Jinzeza fights Zangdez hard to survive. Against the power gap, he uses street tactics like groin kicks and eye pokes. Because he knows only those still standing can talk about justice. After the zombie outbreak, when the administration was fully resisting and building isolation walls, Fushan civilians took advantage of weak security to fiercely fight over supplies. They were all once law-abiding citizens, so they didn't even have proper weapons. They could only fight for survival with their fists. Against this background, many large violent groups emerged. Whoever had the biggest fists survived. This became the only order at the time. Those who rose to the top in this era were all formidable figures. Zangdez was one of them. A robust physique plus fierce combat skills made his group grow increasingly powerful. In other words, he's a human-shaped beast. Someone like this. How could he take Jinzezu seriously? Now Jinzezu is barely hanging on, let alone Anne Shanlin. Trying to break his arm in this situation is a pipe dream. Jinzezu urgently says, change of plan, you go find Major. Or bring Ming's Hagen and the others along. Just run away first. And Shanlin firmly refuses. Two of them can't beat him. Leaving Jinzezu alone is certain death. Their time together has made them acknowledge each other. Then hold on tight. I'll find a way to deal with him. Immediately a big foot kicks Zangdez's face. He used leverage to create distance. Jinzezu tells himself to stay calm. If they pause the attack, giving Zangdez time to think. Even for an instant, they're both dead. The current situation is like fighting a boss in King of Fighters while the boss is at full health and you only have one health bar left. Jinzezu abandoned all dignity. He spat out a mouthful of saliva. At such close range, Zangdez had no time to react. The spit hit him right in the eye. Even the strongest body, as long as it's human, will have a weakness. And Zangdez was a male, so that spot was his fatal weakness. His expression revealed the most agonizing pain a man can experience. But Jinzeza didn't stop there. Once in pain, Zangdez's abdomen relaxed. Liver explosion fist. Good people often lose to bad ones because they disdain using certain methods. But many forget that only those who are still standing in the end can claim to be righteous. And Shanlin was also shocked. A B-class slasher had momentarily subdued an A-class one. The reason was simple. He never forgot that day's humiliation. While Zangdez treated him like an insect, he had always looked up to Zangdez. Learning from shame, he pondered daily how to defeat Zangdez. As An Shanlin was lost in thought, Zangdez's left arm bent, ready to strike. Jinzeza shouted, Don't freeze! Keep twisting, and Shanlin snapped back, gritting her teeth and exerting force. With all her might, she broke his arm. Zangdez roared, You're just a despicable monkey. He ignored An Shanlin, intent on smashing Jinzezu's head. But with his right eye injured, Zhang had lost all sense of distance. Jinzeza grabbed sand and threw it at Zhang's eyes again. Jinzezu yelled, Don't give him a chance, break his other arm. And Shanlin darted to Zhang's other side like a venomous snake. With a powerful squeeze of her legs, Zhang Daja's right arm snapped with a cracking sound. Zhang shouted, You little brats! And Shanlin's damage forced Zangdez to take her seriously. Slammed to the ground, and Shanlin coughed up blood. She was badly hurt and couldn't stand for a while. Zangdez was suffering too, unable to lift his arms. This gave Jinzezu an opportunity. An ape like creature without arms can't beat a human. The power behind his punch was Jin Zhezhong's all out attack. As he struck, he also coughed up blood. The long battle with the gorilla, combined with his previous abdominal gunshot wound, had pushed Jinzezu to his limit. The key to this fight was whose stamina would run out first. Jinzezu clenched his fist. Scenes from the past flashed before his eyes. The humiliation of being knocked down, Manali's injury, people's irretrievable expectations, and the wishes people couldn't protect. All the anger concentrated in this one punch. Building your happiness on others' pain. You don't deserve to be human. Jinzezu struck again with all his might, feeling dizzy. He fell to his knees, exhausted. Zangdez was still standing silently before him. He silently begged for his opponent to fall, because he had no strength left. But he heard Zangdez muttering curses under his breath. He was going mad. This monster had withstood his full force attack. Just then, all light focused on that graceful figure. And Shanlin smiled faintly. If we attack together, we should be able to do it once more. Jinzezu smiled. Of course, Minali had told him to cultivate his strength. Now he clearly understood. This strength wasn't just his own ability and resources, but also reliable comrades. People who hunt zombies for a living commit crimes for money. He wanted to slap this chaotic world awake. A streak of blood crossed the night sky, and this time, the monster fell. The battle ended with Jinzezu and Anshanlin victorious.
Though both sides of the army were human, the defense force, failing to break through, decided to release an A-class mutant. For these men, face was more important than subordinates. Renziguang and his companion were dodging Old Jin's fishhook while sprinting deeper into the forest. Old Jin frowned, thinking, a clever move. This forced him to switch to a more powerful hook. And this was exactly what Renziguang was waiting for. In the dense jungle, small, agile fishhooks would be affected by the trees. Ren aimed to subdue Old Jean when he changed hooks, and the line slowed. See that? The speed is much slower now. Quibide, now's our chance. Quibide tore off his clothes and wrapped them around his hand. He grabbed the fishing line tightly. Complicating the simple is troublemaking. Simplifying the complex is skill. Now it was a test of strength between the two. The best outcome would be if Quibide could pull Old Jean over. But Renziguang wouldn't pin all his hopes on this. At this point, Old Jean posed no threat to him. Run wanted to end this battle himself. Quibide gritted his teeth. Though facing an A-class slasher, his opponent was an old man more than twice his age. Chui believed he wouldn't lose in a pure test of strength. Dreams fuel passion, and blood paves the way to glory. Chui's force nearly made Old Jean lose his grip on the fishing rod. Old Jean said calmly, You disrespectful pup, I'll have to exert myself. Old Jean stomped his right foot on the ground. Old but still strong, not yielding to Lian Pu. Quibide was suddenly yanked off balance. Where did this old man get such strength? When Chui exerted force again, the fishing line didn't budge. It felt like an immovable mountain. The gap in strength gave him a profound sense of helplessness. The taut fishing line cut into his palm. But Quibide knew he had to hold old Jean back no matter what. He didn't want to go back to that day. When the virus first broke out, zombies flooded the campus. He and his seniors were trapped in the cafeteria. The horde of zombies kept slamming against the door. One of the seniors noticed his helplessness. The senior said, if you're scared, you can leave first. In their track team, Quibide always had the best stamina. The seniors couldn't run anymore. That plea to carry on their hopes and live. Chui couldn't overcome the deep-seated fear. Whenever he recalled it, he felt utterly ashamed. This time he wouldn't run away. Come on. Let's have a life-or-death tug of war. When Old Jean thought this terrifying strength came from Renziguang, an A-class like himself, it gave Renziguang a chance to approach him. Ren shouted, Checkmate. Jin's hissen. Old Jean had to admit, Renziguang's tactics were very clever. However, with his battle experience, how could he not anticipate someone attacking from behind? In the next second, a small, compact fishing rod appeared in Old Jin's right hand, swiftly swinging towards Renziguang. Many conflicts in the world are determined by your inner resolve. This was a battle of loyalty and faith. Zaya Changxing silently watched the nuclear power plant. Damn it, why are they still holding out? News of this revolution must not spread. Just then, a soldier shouted urgently, Colonel, Zangdez has been defeated. This news undoubtedly made things worse for the National Defense Force. Do you think this is a boxing match? What about Renziguang? Zaya Changxing shouted frantically. The soldier nervously replied. He didn't even fight Renziguang. It was the survivors among the slashers who took him down. Zaya Changxing suddenly remembered Old Jean. Is that old man fighting Renziguang? Yes, but they're still in fierce combat. Zaya Changxing raised his hand, venting all his anger on the soldier's face. Useless bunch. Can't even kill one man, Renziguang? Holding on to things that don't belong to you only hurts yourself. Release what we brought. Another soldier was shocked. Are you deaf? I said, release the A-class mutant we brought. The soldier asked where to release it. Major Ren's location is too far from here. No, if we release it there, Jin's his and might immediately switch sides. The most suitable place is down below. The soldier's gaze followed Zaya Changxing's downward. But how about our troop losses? Before he could finish, Zhao shot him in the head. Zhao said coldly, release the mutant to draw the enemy slasher's attention. Then we'll pick them off one by one. The remaining soldiers fearfully went to carry out the order. Zaya Changxing's face had become grotesque. If you can't complete the task, it's my reputation that's at stake. The scene changed. The soldier trembled as he approached a giant metal box. In war history, victory often represents justice. Conversely, defeat represents evil. To achieve this goal, the man released an A-class mutant. The shallow keyhole seemed like an endless abyss. Each second the soldier took to insert the key felt like an eternity. Two guards exclaimed in shock, Are we really opening it? The soldier replied, It's the colonel's order. He thinks there's no other way. Wait, does the colonel really know what's inside? That's an A-class mutant we can't kill, only barely contained by cutting off its oxygen. To earn that title, there are very strict standards. First, it must have harmed or infected over 200,000 civilians. Second, it can single-handedly destroy more than two platoons or hold their own against a legion in battle. Third, it must have destroyed at least one city. Fourth, it must have killed at least one A-class slasher. Meeting any of these conditions is enough to be classified as an A-class mutant, 
a massive threat to surviving humans. The one in this box meets the first three conditions and is called the Army Soldier. This mad dog was sealed away at the cost of thousands of soldiers and slashers. Yet due to human conflict, Zaya Changxing wants to release it. The soldier knew all this but not following orders would label him a traitor. He had no choice. This was Zaya Changxing's usual tactic. Becoming a traitor meant his family in Fushan would also be in danger. To avoid being a traitor to the country, he had to betray humanity. The soldier only hoped that the Ministry of Defense had a way to control it. The box opened slowly with a dull sound. As they gazed into the abyss, the abyss gazed back at them. To their surprise, there was nothing inside. Suddenly, a flash of light in the darkness. The three soldiers saw the sky. Because their heads had been severed, a zombie resembling a Spartan warrior slowly revealed itself. The A-class mutant army soldier. At the same time, distant gunfire caught its attention. At this moment, it surprisingly spoke human words destruction. Nearby mortar positions were bombarding the enemy indiscriminately. The next second, a golden light flashed. All soldiers died instantly. The last sound they heard was that single word, destruction. Humans are social animals. The first reaction when encountering danger is to dive into the crowd. Even if those ahead are enemies, a soldier screamed, help, there's a mutant. Mengshegen was shocked. The soldier didn't run far before being impaled by a long spear. Zangsali and two other B-class slashers finally saw the monster clearly. No one could believe their eyes. The infamous army soldier, only seen in reports, a being that transcended death, was now standing before them. Incomprehension and panic exploded like a bomb in the crowd. Even the autistic Songzwian spoke up. Do these lunatics know what they're doing? With a roar, an A-class mutant-led massacre began. The consequence of not reacting in time is death. But could those who did react survive? Mengshegen's heavy armor fell to pieces. He saw his severed arm before him. He had no time to feel the pain of losing a limb. To survive, everyone had to fight with all they had. The National Defense Force and rebels now fought on the same side. This was no longer a political dispute, but a battle for human survival. Meanwhile, Zaya Changxing's subordinate exclaimed through the walkie-talkie. He paid no attention. Now he was focused on directing the snipers to attack the enemy's main force while they were tangled with the mutant, cutting off their lifeline. But soldiers are human, with emotions. Once they sniped the slashers on that side, their own comrades would be exposed to the mutant. As one soldier hesitated, a gun barrel was already pressed against his skull. Another bastard not listening to his master. You must be Rinzaguang's spy. Without hesitation, Zhao pulled the trigger. Shoot them dead before I kill you all. The remaining soldiers dared not disobey, taking aim. Zaya Changxing smiled. That's right, I just need to bring back Rinzaguang and his subordinates heads to return safely behind the defense wall. Ignore the mutant, focus on the human targets. People often view beasts as cruel, yet those fallen to their claws and fangs are less than a tenth of humans killed in wars, because the human heart is most unpredictable. At this moment, the army soldier gathered strength. It leaped high, dodging all bullets. The soldier's legs went weak. The ordinary spear in their eyes now seemed to grin like a devil. At the critical moment, Songzwian selflessly took the fatal blow for a national defense for soldier. He knew this wasn't the time for humans to fight each other, but the force of the blow made his whole body tremble. From what they could see, the army soldier's attacks came from its long spear, so they had to control its weapon first. As the army soldier's veins bulged, trying to break free, Mengshegen wrapped his severed arm around its shield. When dealing with humanoid mutants, the only advantage might be that their internal organs are similar to humans. Liver exploding fist, Mengshegen tried to destroy its internal organs. The army soldier did spit out a mouthful of blue liquid. Is it blood? Did this move work? The next second, an incredibly long tongue with sharp teeth at the tip shot towards Mengshegen like lightning. Fear had been lurking in everyone's hearts, now transformed into sharp fangs. Songzwian realized infection could happen in an instant. He quickly grabbed the army soldier's tongue and the surface slime made him as ineffective as trying to scare a tiger by slapping his thigh. Generally speaking, B-class slashers aren't qualified to fight A-class mutants. This conclusion came from bloody lessons of predecessors, but, Muscle Pig, I'll support you. Let's give it all we've got. We need to maintain morale, be pillars supporting the Major's will. Here were comrades who had faced life and death together. With them around, nothing seemed impossible. The army soldier's advantage was its ridiculously fast mobility. If they could just pin it down, it would be a sitting duck. Got you. A gunshot rang out, and a dark figure slowly fell. It was Mengshegen. The depths of the human heart are unfathomable. No one knew what had happened. Even the army soldier seemed confused. Songzwian cursed angrily. Zangsili, you damn fool. Getting carried away at a time like this? Zangsili broke into a cold sweat, 
knowing he hadn't fired that shot. But who the hell would? He suddenly remembered asking Renziguang, would Fushan ignore us detonating the nuclear plant and start a full-scale war here? Ren had replied, they'll definitely come, because they've lost their minds. Zhang Sili came to his senses, facing an A-class mutant. Did they choose to eliminate the slashers first? The glint of a distant sniper scope confirmed this fact. The devil's roar also told him. The world they wanted to change had already gone this mad. Zhang Sili fell amid Song Zuiyan's heart-rending cries. The human heart is unfathomable, like the sea unmeasurable. Freed from restraints, the army soldier immediately launched a fierce attack on the remaining soldiers. With one strike, Song Zuiyan, prepared to die, was sent flying like a ball. Rebels and National Defense Force soldiers alike reached out desperate hands to catch him. You rest for a bit. We'll try to buy some time. The pressure fell on the ordinary soldiers again. Fear taught them to be strong. Reality taught them cruelty. Just then, Zaya Changsheng's voice came through the National Defense Force's earpieces. Your guns are pointing the wrong way. Our target isn't the mutant. It's the rebelling troops. A soldier nervously replied. But if we kill them first, the mutant will kill us all too. Rather than die together, shouldn't we try to survive together first? Zaya Changsheng didn't rush to give orders. His gun was already aimed at a sniper. He ordered, find the guy who just talked back and kill him. Then he spoke into the radio. I'll say it one more time. Our mission isn't to eliminate the mutant, nor is it to survive. We have only one goal, eliminate the rebels. If you don't want your families in Fushan to suffer and want them to live safely in their small apartment, then follow my orders. Otherwise, I'll treat you as rebels and kill you too. All the National Defense Force soldiers heard this. They gritted their teeth, unwilling. But their guns still pointed at those who had just fought alongside them against the mutant. The formation fell into chaos at this moment. What are you doing? They'll hurt my son in Fushan. Please understand. The word understand seemed to help clear his conscience. False sincerity is more terrifying than outright evil. Nearby, a rebel soldier shielded Song Zuiyan from incoming bullets. He knew without the slasher, no one could face this monster. He said, please, you must survive. They've lost their minds. All of them. This thought hammered in Song Zuiyan's mind. By now, only a few people still standing could face the A-class mutant. Zaya Changsheng was watching this scene. At this moment, he felt very pleased. He ordered, everyone pack up. Let's go see if that old man has taken down Renziguang. He imagined his promotion upon return. He also instructed his subordinates to call for evacuation helicopters. He thought, four or five should be enough for the remaining people. Where are you going? This sound was like a thunderclap to Zaya Changsheng. It was Pio Zingwo leading a group of civilian slashers who had just arrived. Zhuowan raised his air gun, saying fiercely, Can we end him? Pio Zingwo narrowed his eyes. Fire. Our goal is just to get the wireless communicator. At this moment, Zaya Changsheng truly panicked. Wait, isn't there some misunderstanding between us? Misunderstanding? You attacked neutral civilian slashers and tried to wipe out Major Ren and his troops. You even brought an A-class slasher to make slashers kill each other and released an A-class mutant. Your crimes are too numerous to list. Is this the misunderstanding you're talking about? With the dull sound of the air gun, several bullets carrying the zombie virus entered Zaya Changsheng's body. A man who disregarded life and played with power died. However, things were far from over. Just as National Defense Force soldiers approached to check on him, Zaya Changsheng, now a zombie, began tearing at them. Next came the moment of revenge for the civilian slashers. But how to deal with that A-class mutant? Due to copyright reasons, please refer to the original comic for the continuation. Thank you all for watching.